It's time for the main event. Like, comment, subscribe if you're feeling the vibe. Representing the BX. This ain't Nickelodeon. This ain't Disney. This ain't Netflix. This ain't Hulu. This is Grown Thought Talk. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Bronx Ronan the Sensei, your favorite announcer's favorite announcer, aka the promo man. I am one fourth of the crew that puts this whole thing together. Right now, we got Felton, we got Kev, Wise is popping in as well, and we got the wonderful Shawnee's high. You know what I mean? So we're gonna have ourselves a good deep conversation tonight. Tonight's topic. Peace is paramount. Allegedly. You know I what I mean? cannot stay. Yeah. So what we're going to do real quick before we get into the conversation, I'm going to hit y'all with a couple of admin notes. As you all, should, you all should be aware, we are on YouTube. All of our episodes will be hung on our YouTube channel, Grown Folk Talk Tribunal. Go ahead and search for it. Our page will pop up. We've got a bunch of episodes out there. I think we have six zoom episodes on there right now and we also have a couple of episodes of walk and talk with the ronin which two more will be loaded by the time sunday comes around all right so there's that also um looks like she's not on right now but i was going to give her a shout out anyway shout out to francis for my her book can you hear me which can also be found on amazon.com i actually just went ahead and i made a, a made a purchase tonight so just to give you all a little bit of headspace, if you want to get that book, supplies are limited. There's like nine books left as of an hour ago. So make sure you go ahead and publish that book. Appreciate y'all being out here. Those of you that are on here live, thank you. Those of you that are watching this on the replay, thank you. As always, the support is needed and necessary. We want to get the message out there and enlighten the people. If we could touch one person with our message, that's all we want. You know what I mean? We're trying to spread pro positivity and knowledge out here. We're not trying to be reckless and crazy. You know what I mean? So, Kev, man, you got any rules for the group? Um, if you got beef with anybody, take that shit to the street. Don't bring that shit in here. I'm, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> because I'm going to just say it right off the back. Because I'm going to say what everybody else don't want to say. My man, lucky I wasn't in here last week because then we would have had a problem. That's all I'm going to say. Don't don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's the most negative shit you're gonna get out of me in this conversation. Maybe. I don't know yet. Maybe. Depending on <laughs> depending on the questions that's asked, you know what I mean? Because we got a couple of deep ones to talk about. It's supposed to be a safe space, not a all niggas ain't shit space. Like that's not the type of program we're running. They have other programs and other outlets to those issues, like counseling and therapy. Yes, that's not what this is. Yep. We don't get paid like they do. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'll say to that. Word. And I'm even scared to ask Mike what he's doing right now because I feel like he's working right now, but. I'm always working. Nah, man. He posted up at the bank right now, allegedly getting ready to poke somebody. That's what's going to happen. All right. If the bank is on the news tomorrow, we know what happened. <laughs> They got me watching the bank, so you know it's gonna go fucked up. Yeah, your, <laughs> your man, your man got a black tee on, so you know that's suspect already. <laughs> <laughs> he got his unit. He got his uniform shirt off. <laughs> your man over here getting ready to roll up. Uh, allegedly, 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 allegedly. Oh, you making the mic hot talking like that, like. <laughs> You oh, make it spot hot. That's it. <laughs> All right, y'all. So we're going to go ahead and get into the topic of discussion tonight. You know, again, we're talking about peace is paramount, handling our triggers, right? So there's a lot of stressful stuff going on in the world right now. And it's only a matter of time before a lot of us go over the edge. You know what I mean? Emotions, they boil up over like a water, like water in a pot. You over here cooking your tea water and all that. You make it, you're, you're doing your coffee. You know what I mean? When it boils, it spills over and everything around us gets burnt. Family, friends, loved ones. Nobody is safe when we got all this pent up wrath. 
You know what I mean? So we're going to do our part to really dive in and, and try to define what peace looks like and what exactly are triggers. We're also going to be talking about emotional intelligence. That's a very big part of that. So let me go ahead and drop the first question for everyone. What is the real definition, or should I say, what is your definition of peace? What does peace look like for you? I guess it depends on what phase in life you're in. Um, I don't know. That's such a... That's, that's a, a loaded ass question, question bro. Yeah. It's a loaded because yeah. just like I, I've, I've said something... You really can't put a real definition on peace because my peace is different from the next three people on man's peace. So my definition is for me, per se, than another person, how they de define their peace. I just think it depends on what part of life you're in. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Absolutely. so I mean, like right now, my for peace for me would be like having what I need for my kids. Um just having my own mental right so that I can be the best mother I can be like at least right now now five years from now if you ask me what peace looks like that might not my answer will probably have that in it but that won't be my only answer right right yeah that, that definitely makes a lot of sense and you know I, I agree that and that's why I phrased the question the way that I did because everybody has their own definition of peace like peace right. for me you know what I mean, is kind of like you said, Shawnice, making sure that your kids are straight, you know what I mean, making sure that your mind is right, making sure that you have, you know, your basic needs being met and all of that stuff, making sure that you have time to process and think, Right. you know what I mean, at, at different parts of the day, you know, that's, that's my version of my definition of peace. Somebody else's definition of peace may be, yo, I just want to sit back, sit back and blast dudes playing Call of Duty, allegedly. You know what I mean? Like that could be somebody else's version of peace. Mm -hmm. I can say like my version of peace is basically it stems from just being able to uh, overcome adversity and get over certain hurdles, mm -hmm. get to the finish line, which is, you know, peace for everybody. Right. Being able to get over certain things and being able to uh, spearhead certain situations follow through find a solution to that problem and move on that's how that's to me is what my piece is mm. being able to initiate help for other people that's peace for me too right so that's what my definition of it is and i've come a long fucking way i'll tell you that much <laughs> mm. I could almost say that I'm at peace, but I'm not fully there yet because there's still other things that need to be done. Right. But you, but you know, is it a point where we could right now, you know, collectively, all of us, we can go through a situation and we can never let that situation control our emotions where it's going to make us make wrong decisions. Right. Mm -hmm. And we, right now, all of us, we can have a, you know, God forbid something happened to us it's we we've grown so much where we know how to handle a situation right we, we know how to deal and make the conscience decision I right, is if i make this decision it's going to affect not only me my kids my mm -hmm. family and everything that i take care of right versus people that don't have that peace of mind when they make that drastic decision out of emotion and anger mm -hmm. they don't care the backlash that is going to cause onto them and people around them Right. Yeah. No, that's, Definitely that's, takes growth. Yeah. And not only not only growth, but it also takes awareness too, because mm -hmm. yeah, self awareness. Yeah, it's it's one thing to come up with a definition of peace, but with that definition of peace, you also have to look at the flip side of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You also have to look at what is it that will truly disturb my peace right and how can i mitigate against that you know what i mean if you don't have that level of awareness and said situation happens and you go off rattling off then your peace is going like that mm -hmm. you know? see i'm 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 at a point at where if i feel a person trying to disturb my peace 
family or not, I don't have a problem cutting the person off. Uh. Because it, it, it took me, me per se, to get to that level of peace. And for me to allow a person to bring me back down to where I don't want to be at, I'd rather cut. I, could, I got a bunch of ex-cousins and ex-uncles and ex-aunts that tried that. And respectfully, I still love them, but my peace is more important. Yeah. I don't think I've ever gotten to the cutting off phase. I know I get to uh, a point uh, now uh, where uh, I got scissors. Yeah, yeah, I don't yet, and I think I, I get to a point now where I'll defend myself more when it comes, especially when it comes to family. Because when it, when it involves family, I would just kind of hold back. But now I don't hold back. But then I also distance myself. Like I won't cut you off per se. But I will distance myself. So you would probably be like, where's Shanice? Like, Shanice is not coming around because I don't feel like I don't need to. It's too much. It's too negative. Yeah, yeah. You know? Hey, but I wouldn't put the cut it off. Good evening. I'm here. Hey, Dee Dee. <laughs> hey. Dee, what up? Hey, Kevin. I don't know where she's hiding at, but you could tell <laughs> she's where she's supposed to be at. <laughs> Damn. I don't want to be on camera um, allegedly smoking, you know? Wow. <laughs> Yo, we got to get we gotta get these allegedly t-shirts made for real. Cannot, right, right. That's going to that's gonna be the first piece of merchandise, allegedly. Mm, that, you can, we can open up a store. Let's say, y'all in a legal state. Yo, we'll be okay. But yeah, Didi. Hey, real quick, D. What's your definition of peace? Um, I mean, no stress. Like, I keep my peace up. If I see anybody trying to disturb my peace, I try to stay stress free. I have bad anxiety. I try not to have anxiety attacks and all that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, stress free. That's peace. That is peace, peace. So, I mean, I cut people off too. Just like Mike said, I don't give a damn family, best friend. Like, I'll cut a person off in a second. If I see somebody trying to disturb my peace, mm -hmm. mm -mm. I ain't gonna allow that because it's, it's when they disturb your peace, it's the chain reaction. Yep. Your peace is disturbed, yeah. and you start stressing. Then you know the attitude change. You might stop. You might stop eating. You know what I'm saying? You might be lashing out on other people, all because that one person disturbed your peace. Right. right. So you know. You know there was there was one. Feel, my best friend. Okay. No, I'm gonna just say peace is stress free to me. When you stress mm -hmm. me, I'm, I'm at peace. Mm-hmm. Just to, to piggyback on what she said about peace, it's just one lesson I learned when I was young, and it was a it was a hard lesson. My real peace is when I started to realize when I paid all my bills that I'm broke, but I can go home to my own apartment, my own room, my own bed, my own electricity, and just this time I used to sit in my room, in my house, my living room. Just with everything off, but it's my peace. This is something I don't have to be in the streets. I don't have to be in somebody else's house or under. This is my rules. Right. When I've right. learned that at a young age, when I got my first apartment, I say, yeah, this is peace. Mm -hmm. The fact that I don't care, I don't got no money in my pocket, but all my bills are paid. Right. I'm going home to my place of mine, yeah. and that's just like you know your fortune of solitude. I don't have to. There, there was times, even my fucked up years, where I thought I had to be in the streets. When I sat my ass down and just chilled in the house, that was peace of mind because I got to think better. I got to open up my range of what I really want to do in life. Right. Yeah, man. That, that's 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 a that's a really great point because what what you're alluding to is you're appreciating the small things, mm -hmm. the yeah. small victories. Yeah. You know what I mean? You 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 gotta when you have the little things, you gotta be grateful for it because at a moment's notice, that stuff can be taken away from you. Also, you know what I mean? So I think I think gratitude is a very big part of the dynamic of a person's peace. Right, so so we talked about we talked about peace. All right, what our definition of peace is? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you know, like I said, the other side of that is knowing what can disrupt our peace. So the flip side question is, what is a trigger? What Anything. is a, what the, what does the term trigger mean? And what are some types of triggers that you all face from time to time that could jeopardize mm -hmm. your peace?
I don't know. Like, it could be a person. It could be sometimes things trigger you and you don't even realize what triggered you. It could be a statement. Okay. It could be words. Yeah, like, it, it literally a trigger. It. To me, my definition of a trigger could literally be anything. Like, it was a video. Um, I think I sent to Max earlier. Of, um, by Joey Badass. If you wake mm-hmm. up, and this how he said, if you wake up in a bad energy, your whole house have that bad energy. Yeah, yeah. That's and then I mean. when when you go when you and your house go out to the world, you go out and spread that bad energy. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because en- energy travels. Mike, yeah. and, 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 and like I said, let, let, let's say for example, me, I'm ahead of my household. I wake up with a bad state of mind. My my piece is all messed up, and I'm giving off that bad energy. Then the kids is gonna have the bad energy. And then once we go out to the world, then we spreading it. And it's just all either through a trigger. It's just the trigger could be an old memory, flashbacks, um, something that's said on um, social media. A trigger could be anything that could uh, that could affect somebody's peace and you know their energy. I- yeah. Yeah, I agree. Kev, I, I think you were getting ready to say something, man, but you were you were muted in the process. Y'all ever had like a situation where y'all was at work and you was in a good mood and you started noticing that people at the job, everybody, I swear to God, every Tuesday at my job, somebody pissed off. That's <laughs> bro. You notice the energy shift, yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, I think we uh I think we lost your audio, bro. Like you're unmuted, but nothing's pushing through. Levels is good. But my thing is, can y'all hear me? Yeah, you good yeah. now. Yeah, you good. Yeah. Good. yeah, but my thing is is I learned this new thing when I was going to therapy, right? Because I noticed that everybody who was pissed off are the people you need to stay away from. So it got to the point where I would just be like in a corner by myself. I'm like, y'all not fucking my day up, man. Like, nah, I'm not gonna let y'all tarnish my day because <laughs> I, I always notice that everybody can have a bad day. Right. Mm-hmm. Emphasis on day. Yep. Mm-hmm. Only way you can have a bad week is if you allow yourself to have a bad week. Anybody can have a bad day. Correct. If you go home, you know, reflect, kind of rebound off of that reset, you should be good the next day. Right. Yep. Because if you let that shit dwindle from the day before into the new day, then you're screwed for the rest of the week. Mm-hmm. It's all mental. Nobody can't make you be who or what you are. That's solely up to you, period. Right. You got to yep. give the permission to right. allow that energy to invade your space. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You got to make that conscious choice. But some people like that. They like the attention that comes from it. So that's yeah, yeah, that yeah. attention seekers. Yeah, I, I, I mean, whenever I'm having like a bad day and I'm at work, they be like, you know, they can see it on my face because it's always yep. on my face. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and I'll just tell them like, I don't want to put my bad vibes on. I'm like, you know, just let me get a minute. Let me, you know, get my thoughts together. If I feel like talking, you know, I'm a talk. But if it's really not work related, I don't want to have any personal or side conversation right now. All right. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want I don't want my bad vibes to you know to feed off to you yep. you know to feed off to you and then you like you know you feel some type of way because I'm in my mood and I'm acting funny right mm-hmm. so whenever I get in those kind of funks and you know I just say to myself and I and there's I know there's a lot of people that they bring their outside drama inside of work and they try to you know take it out on people and they what they 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 just they're just dwelling yeah. right. It, it kind of it kind of gives a nod to the old statement of misery loves company, right? Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean. You walk mm-hmm. in That's there with a cloud over your head, and then the next thing you know, your best friend is now infected, for lack of a better term, and then that person's just like, and it's dragging it, just carries right. on. It's like everybody got emotional COVID, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. ooh, emotional COVID. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> yeah, fun. Really. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, triggers triggers is a real thing. And <clears throat> something else too, you know, a, a lot of what is being talked about right now kind of ties into um, self-awareness. You know what I mean? There's people that have triggers now mm-hmm. that either don't know about it yep. or they're completely ignorant of it. They're like, well, I have my faults, but I don't give a fuck. And right. 
it's it's all about me. Woe is me. I'm the victim. So is me. I want people to feel what I'm feeling right now. So I'm going to push this out and they mm-hmm. want to watch the world burn. You know, mm-hmm. how's the world going to heal from that? I got right. a question for everybody. Like everybody could answer it. What are your red flags? A lot. As far as what? Anything. You, you got to emphasize on that. Yeah, 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 really because because that. yeah. Like, what are your like, red flags like in relationships with friends and like anything like all right, we'll my start red flag is like or, or I'm an overthinker. Me too. I will overthink yeah, a damn I'm situation. You hear me? I will it, it could be a small <laughs> I, I situation. Already see it coming. Yep. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's like I'll start overthinking. Yeah. I create and a whole that's scenario. My, that's my major red flag. I don't know. I guess a red flag would be like emotional instability. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, in or yeah. inconsistent, inconsistent emotions, mm-hmm. meaning that they get really volatile. Like if you can go from one yeah. extreme to another extreme, that's like a red flag. On you. Lying. That means like you can't. Yeah, you can't really you know regulate your emotions. That's a huge red flag. For me. See, when it comes to lying, what Snee said, it's for me is lying about the petty small shit. Like if right. you gotta lie about small shit. <laughs> About something small, you're gonna lie to me about something major. Something so big, like, right? Exactly. That's that's one major. If you gotta lie about something that's literally nothing, right? I can imagine if a big situation happened, what you're gonna be truthful about that? Right. Exactly. Yeah. I'm true. Lying is a big that's lying, but everybody lies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah but everybody we- lies. There's good lies and there's bad lies. I'm about to say, oh, no, we're not going to have that conversation, the, the, the degree of lyingness. <laughs> everybody lies to tell the truth. Everybody, everybody <laughs> lies, man. Okay? <laughs> now I'm going to go with levels now. Coming, coming from an ex-manipulator, it's lies, it's, it's good lies. <laughs> I can't wow. lie. Ex-manipulator. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yo. Nah, I'm not gonna say allegedly because nah, I know I'm what not, I did. No, that, that that's not allegedly. That, that definitely happened. <laughs> I, I know, I know what I did. Dini can tell you. I, <laughs> I, I've done some shit. <laughs> that is that is allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Max, you these dad jokes. I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. I ain't, look. Look. You see how much hair I lost, yo. Yes. I got free got reign it. to say yeah. any dad jokes I want. I cannot, yo. <laughs> no, you got it. That's you. Oh my god. But yeah, red flags, man. Um, trust, trust is a big one. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. For me, yeah. for me personally, if a person cannot express how they feel, let me have my. That food. is an <laughs> ultimate red flag for me. I think I'm agree with that one. You know what I mean? Like, if it, like if you're feeling a Honorable. certain kind of way, or you're thinking something like, "I kind of want to know," mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Especially if you're close to me, right? If you if you cannot come to me at your most vulnerable, if that's mm-hmm. a concern, like you don't want to see yourself as weak or broken or whatever, like I don't give a fuck about that. Like right. if you're feeling something, if something's on your mind or something's bothering you, like. Yo, I expect you to come to me and open mm-hmm. up. And I know it's not the easiest thing to do. I get that. I understand. Mm-hmm. But, but see, that, that that goes when people are having ego problems. Mm-hmm. Elaborate. Because if I have an ego problem, I'm not going to come to a person like, you know what? I fucked up and did this and I whatever. But so prideful. A, a prideful ego. If I have a pride problem, uh-huh. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to come to an evil level with somebody. Like you know what? Let's talk about it. Versus, nah, fuck that. I know I'm right. I'm. I'm this. I'm that. Nah, nah. It's it's pride and ego that comes a, a detrimental that's to certain people. Yep. What that's do you it. What do you think? What do you think? Um. Tr- um. Not triggers the ego, but what do you think causes that? Mm. Personal. Personal stuff. Personal yeah, stuff. Personal personal stuff that you haven't come to amends with. Mm-hmm. If I can say that. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of you're kind of alluding to trauma. Tra- right. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. A lot of trauma is it comes with a lot of triggers and your reactions to 
certain situations may be the wrong because you got personal things that you haven't fixed yet. You think society this, as well? Say that again. Say it again. I said you think society as well because when it be like, yeah. especially like yeah. if you say like for men, it's hard for most men to become vulnerable because yes. in society yes. they're they're deemed as weak when they become vulnerable. Because it's weaponized, that's why. It's I was just about to say that, Kevin. That's it's a jam. You know, it's a weapon. That's yeah. a fact. Yeah, it's it's a jam. I was gonna say that. Yeah. I was just that shit. What the? It's rip funny. Right it's the funny because I think we all was getting ready to hit the golden buzzer on that one. <laughs> we was like, <laughs> weaponized, bitch. <laughs> 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 no, you, you gotta think yo, about it. It's unfortunate that it is weaponized. I, thank God I've never weaponized it, but it is unfortunate really, that that happens because that affects a lot of relationships. And that can right now, right now, if you go, you come to any man right now that doesn't have, you know, you know, that has prior problems, and you tell him, "Them, you gotta chill because you weak." Society is gonna make that guy like, "Oh shit, I'm gonna get defensive." Versus right. caring and nurturing and like now nah, you know right. what it's all right to have that kind of feeling as a man yeah because yeah. like i said um i think max or Delta said a couple of weeks ago therapy is mm-hmm. taboo to us black culture right very true very true it's very taboo to say therapy and and i literally just had someone close to me oh therapy that's you know people make you crazy no 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 Mm-mm. no no, absolutely yeah, there's not. A, there's a there's a sad misconception a stigma. about that's that. an entire stereotype. Mm-hmm. And coming yes. from a man who's been in therapy for three years now, that is a complete and utter stereotype. And that sounds more yes. like a cop out because they yes. don't yes. want to express yep. their feelings to somebody. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cop out, and it's me, yep. a person, not accepting that they have problems that need to be checked. Right. Exactly. We yep. all got problems that need therapy to be is highly needed. I love therapy. Is it highly, highly needed? <laughs> any, nigga from, any person, me. any person from New Settlement needs fucking. That shit gave me that shit with the apartment, nigga. They say, listen, we're gonna give you the apartment for about nine hundred dollars a month, and then you guys gotta go to therapy. <laughs> Yo, Felton. Right. Felton, you go ahead. You can go ahead and log off for me real quick. Like, <laughs> right, I'm out. Here. I'm out. Here. I'm out. Go sit in the back. corner. I'm out. Like, I'm when out. I went just saying. like Felton, like when Felton said therapy is needed. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I forgot what week was it, Max. I think the week that you you took off, I had maybe a personal problem that took two weeks off, and yeah. I'd rather not come on live because then my vibe is gonna come off a little right. kind of off. Right. But there was an episode, I think the week after, it was something Kevin and Mikey was talking about that it was, you know what, it was something I needed to hear because I'm not the only one that's going through these personal problems and the mm-hmm. outlets that they took. I kind of said, you know what, maybe I need that same kind of outlet. Yeah. So yeah. therapy is very, very fucking needed. But like I said, our culture says it's yeah. taboo and it's wrong. Yeah. And this is where generational curses become broken. Yeah. Yep. 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 Oh, right, right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait. Do you feel like emotional intelligence is a, is a uh, generational Ooh. curse? Of yes. people what is it? emotional intelligence? Like, what, well, I love what is that? All right. So, we, in, like layman, in like layman terms, it's basically just using your emotions correctly. And oh, make okay. sure that you're not making a wrong yeah. decision yeah. based off your emotions. But see, I uh, know. But but wait, it's, that sounds kind of oh. crazy. But it's it's a lot of self regulation involved with it. it it's like a three sixty. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Also, go ahead, guys. It's yeah, like a three sixty. It's like a three sixty roll. For example, just like what I said, Shanice. If I wake up in a bad mood and I share it, I'm spreading that that negativity. Right. My my emotions, I'm spreading it out because he, and it's got to be sometimes a controlled emotions. If I wake up in a bad mood, fuck everybody. Everybody about to be in a bad mood because of me. Yeah. Versus I can say, you know what? I'd rather keep it in and just be chill and not spread my negativity to people that's close to me. But see, that's how you're supposed to suppress that shit because yes. your, your whole mindset is, oh, if I'm pissed off, you pissed off with me. See, you, right, the, right. you, the, type of, you the type of motherfucker I stay away from at work because right. what's going to happen is as I'm sitting there trying to talk to you, I don't know what's going on with you. Next thing you know, you getting all pissed off. 
<laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> what happened? Where'd he go? Did wow. he stop again? It's not baby mama drama, it's baby drama. <laughs> oh baby in the back. Yeah, I heard the kids and then he paused it. He put it on mute. Yeah, but so it's all pretty much basically like using logic. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. Yes, but so using, using logic, logic through your emotions. Okay. And I feel like yeah. and it's gonna sound crazy, but I feel like men are better at that than than women. Like we're uh, we're so emotional. So I mean we can get creatures. the logic. We're emotional mm-hmm. creatures. So Sometimes someone has to rear me back in. They're like, Shanice, I need you to stop. I need you to breathe. I need you to think. And then that's when logic comes into play because I'll react off my emotion quicker than I would anything else. Now, if I'm feeling a certain way and I'm feeling negative, I'll say to myself because I'm like, if I stay to myself, then no one else is going to have to worry about getting my energy, my bad energy. Let's talk about that as far as like self-regulating. Um, like when you do face those kind of things and you feel like yourself, you're in a space where you feel emotional and you're responding Right. You immediately respond that way. Like, what are some of the techniques and methods that you guys use to, like, bring yourself back to a space of equilibrium? The only thing that I use, and I can honestly say I've been using this since I was a kid, is fucking music. Yes. Yeah. Oh my Mine's, my, mine is, is, is comedic, comic. I'll go through stand-up comedy and some kind of funny comedy to you put me back into my center space. It would be music in that. Absolutely. You need to make yourself laugh. You need to be able to yeah, get, yeah. Get, yeah. laughter is yeah, big, get positivity big. Kicks back in. Yeah. Now I was yeah. referring to like when you're in the middle of it. Yo, oh, yeah, I use oh, yeah. when you're so in the middle of it. Like I, you know when the I kid... use hindsight. Sorry. Okay. Oh. Now, I use like I use hindsight. I usually what I do in a situation, what I've been doing, it's like it's like a, a like a mental game of chess. <laughs> And I'll look at a situation, and before I even react, or before I even utters my mouth and goes through that filter, I'm already like playing on a couple of moves ahead of. Like if I say this, then this can happen, and this can happen, and this can happen, and I gotta have a play for each of those individual situations that occur through my reaction. So that's how I really logically juggle that shit within 2.9 seconds. Honestly, so and working on it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm still working on it because if I'm in the midst of being emotional, depending on what's get happening, I can go from zero to 100 very fast. I'm either high or I'm low. So if I am in the midst of that, if there's someone around me that can calm me down, I'm fine. But if it's not, I'm, a, I'm, I'm raging. When I'm in the middle of raging, I do not know the carnage I have created until after I calm down. Yeah. So... I'm, so, that's I'm, I'm still working on myself when it comes to that. So I try to stay away. Like if, like if me and my ex-husband are going to get into it, I'll say, listen, I ain't got time for this. Bye. Like I'm not having this conversation because I already know where I'm going to go with it and how it's going to go. Gonna go. Because, uh, it's good you know yourself in that way. And that, that's really honest of you to say that. So Appreciate that. For yeah, me, there's a lot of self-regulation therapy. too. Friends, friends therapy. <laughs> That's it. That's it. For me, it's like I'm gonna be honest with y'all, yo. But my real trigger pull is my kids when they don't listen. <laughs> That's everybody. You know what That's I mean? Everybody, kids in here. And, and I say that because, and I've gotten I've gotten better over time because of you know these conversations that we're having on grown folks talk, but we, like true story. You know, mm-hmm. like I used to be like all in heavy voice and all of that. But now I'm like, like if I get into that mindset where I'm repeating myself and they're not listening, then I'm like, I'm more stern with it. But I'm also quick to be like, don't pull that trigger too hard. Mm. Make sure you say what you have to say. Mm. If you have to pull yourself back for a minute or two to kind of chill out and calm and then re-engage and have a conversation with them so that they understand where you're coming from and why you said the things that you said and if you said something that was kind of hurtful you kind of apologize for it but you state your true intent <laughs> that's what i strive to do now and it works yeah and, and just an example what max is what max said because i can actually have an example yesterday me and max was you know brainstorming about today's show we I'm going back and forth talking, and then my son calls me 10 times back to back. So I hang up and ask him what happened. 
The boy asked him, can I have some cereal? I said, why would you ask me a silly question when your uncle and your aunt's around you and you want to call me for something? It's like trigger moments like that. But then as a kid, I got, you know, as him being a kid, I got to realize, I got to, you know, put my mindset and like, it's not really a big thing. Yep. What yeah, was behind the cereal that's a, that's a good point. <laughs> what, what was behind the cereal? What was behind the asking? Did he just want to connect just... with you as dad? Yeah. yeah. No, he's just, yeah, yeah. Just kind of have some yeah. cereal. Knowing he yeah. just, you know, before, every time before I leave the house, I always make sure there's boxes of cereal. I tell him, this is your house. You can get whatever you want. And I understand as a kid, sometimes they want to, can I have this? Because I yeah. always tell him, you make a mess, clean it. So do it's sometimes think, that, it, I'm right, fair. Do you think it was like more of like, he relates the cereal to dad and then dad to him <laughs> brings safety? And like, there's the connection there. Like, oh, I'm eating cereal. Reminds me of my dad. Let me call my dad. Mm. It does remind him because there's many times where he may have made himself cereal and just left the whole mess behind. So when he makes cereal, now he hears me clean their mess behind you. So now he's getting the, the idea of calling. Can I have yeah. some cereal? I'm going to like this morning. I've done my work. Um, is it okay? Can I go play the games? So when he does stuff, he thinks of me first, like, damn, he's going to say something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But then it's just me as a parent that's still learning. Just like Max says, sometimes the kids can be a trigger. It's like, why would you ask me something that you know? But then it's as a kid, they're thinking like, damn, if I do this, I want to make sure I tell him I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. You know what, too? They have, I, I think children have a more different emotional intelligence than we had yeah. when we were younger. <clears throat> they're more because adept to it than we are. They, right yeah, now, yeah. yeah, because, yeah, they, we're the only real thing that they really see besides the fucking yeah, daddies yeah. and shit. So they're super attached to us. I did notice that quite differently. Mm -hmm. like, we weren't so attached to our, to our parents. Our parents were like, go. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now yeah. Our, our, kids are, our kids are very needy. Like emotionally, my kids always <laughs> want to be around me no matter what. And I was like, I was never like this. For my parents yeah, at all. yeah. And you, and you know, know what I'm saying about that? It's mm -hmm. that you say that because you know how we were when we was younger. Like we was just yeah. off outside in front of the building. Right. Yes, exactly. Not, That's what I'm saying. Not, so like before I got on a Zoom call, y'all, I was on the game plan Roblox with my son for the last hour and a half because that's what he did. <laughs> Now, mm -hmm. I remember asking my mother to do certain stuff, and my mother always said, no. Yeah. I think we all grew up with the same mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kevin, we can't uh, hear you. We can't hear you, mic, Kevin. Your mic is going in and out, Your bro. mic, we can't hear you. Mac. You. Yeah. Do you think, just when you and Mike was saying that, like, mm -hmm. do you think that we, because I do the same thing, like, when our kids do certain things, Sometimes I feel like maybe we get upset because we see ourselves in that situation. Uh -huh. Absolutely. So it's like yeah. when they do something, it's like we're talking to ourselves, but we're talking out loud. It's, it's like we're looking at them like, why would you do that? When in reality, it's like we're talking to our younger self. Yeah, and we're like, it. why would you do that when you know not to do it? And then we're saying it out this loud and then why... we stop ourselves and we're like, whoa, yeah. whoa. That's why like, I pulled yeah. back from it too. That's why I pulled yes. back from it because yes. what's happening is it's like a chain reaction. I swear that shit is like, I know many times I've sounded like my mother to my kids. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. All the time. It's Hold up now. Like, <laughs> let me run that back real quick. Like, right. Let me calm down. Yeah. Because I, I, I had a bunch of like trigger points with my kids today. Like they was doing the most today. Got you. And when I, I tell our you, kids are many me's, huh, Kevin? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. And that's why when they kept doing certain stuff, I would tell my son to sit down, sit down, sit down. Mm -hmm. He over here doing cartwheels. He over here running around like a <laughs> So I'm he just like, like being a kid. Exactly. This is <laughs> this is why I can't be mad at him for being a kid. Yeah. Right. My kids, they, my kids are older now. now. But I got like I mine's are 23, uh, 21, and 19. Mm -hmm. But I'm even still at this yeah, I'm old as hell. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready for that. Allegedly. I'm not ready for that. So, not ready. so even now, like my kids, uh, my kids, like I'll have a conversation with them, and she'll pop off and say something like, "Mom, why'd you say that to me?" And I'm like, "What you talking about?" She was like, 
I was very offended at what you just said. And I, I would think to myself, like, I'm thinking in my head, like, bitch, you offended? What? Right. <laughs> <laughs> <For myself. laughs> and I'm like, oh, Francis, what did you just say? And I'm like, oh, shit, friend, you know, you're not supposed to say that. Like, go ahead and apologize. Get your ego out the way so you can smooth this shit over and you guys can right. keep pushing. It's because we're so used to that. Like, to us, that's normal. So, my grandma, our, when our parents threatening us or saying something crazy to us, we like, all right, whatever. But when we say it to our kids, they're like, why would you say that? That's so mean. And we're looking at you like, dude, toughen up. When they in reality, keep us accountable. That's Shanice. a trick, yeah. right? Ain't, like, listen, oh. ain't nothing wrong with that. And ain't right. nothing wrong with that. And no, I'm not being corrected from time to time. Nothing wrong right, with that. Right, No, very yeah. true. Trust me, I have apologized to my kids. It, Lord knows. And I got a funny rule with my kids too. My man Chris Holly put me onto this shit. He said if it's if it if it's funny, you can't discipline him for it. Right, right, yep. <laughs> Yo, one more time. If it's funny, you can't discipline him for it. Mm. I believe in that too, though. My I kids laugh, are doing some shit that they ain't had no business doing, but it was yeah. funny. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna let you rock, cause yeah. like, <laughs> I right. can't discipline him if it's funny. And I've been living by that ever since my daughter. <laughs> like, especially especially like if they like, fall. Especially like, like, yeah, like, like my son <laughs> likes to do flips on the couch and all of that stuff. My son is like like a daredevil, like pure daredevil. Oh, uh, because his pops used to do wild shit back in the day, oh, too. Ah. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> this is very true. But yeah, he would do like, like he does perfect front flips, cartwheels and everything. And I'm like, so he'll do it. I keep telling him, yo, don't don't do it on no, the couch because he won't fall. And then when he falls and busts his ass and he comes crying, oh. I'm like, you good? And then I start laughing. <laughs> My face is funny. You know? But oh, back, back. <laughs> I'll tell you this though. My kids, like uh, I see them different, I see them as different phases of myself. Like yeah. my oldest, mm. he took the whole brunt of all my shit. And then the second one, she kind of like took the second portion of my getting better self. And my third one, she got the best version of me, mm -hmm. which now I know who I am. I love myself. And she's the most secure one that I have. Oh, wow. The other two, yeah, the other two are still working through the trauma and shit that I created in their lives. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And um, but I'm present for it. And I'm, I think as I, as that, as I confirm, like some of the insecurities that I created in them, uh, they're able to be more open with me as, as I, um, as I confirm whatever it was that they were feeling at that time. Friend. Yeah. Word. And it huh? kind of, I mean, you just said, or you said you're present for it. I'm Do you present think for that, it. The, that presence creates that peace? Um, I, I think the presence creates the peace and also too like if you didn't give them a voice previously right now is the time for you to shut up and right. give them yeah. ear to listen because right. it allows them to speak whatever it is on their heart and whatever you might be feeling by what they say mm -hmm. that might be a time for you to self-regulate and write yeah. it down because your body language is going to speak everything yep. and they'll feel it so just try to like be empathetic right yes. and try to feel your way through it mm -hmm. so that way you can create that bond and that trust with them and that's Empathy. why i like you use that word because that's what i try to do is become present with them like yeah instead of trying to be like our my mother in the words they like stop it and just go do as i say not as i do just shove you off mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. i'd rather give them a voice even if it's gonna hurt my feelings my thing is it's not what you say it's how you say it right so yeah. we sit down and yep. we speak i want to look at you in your eyes look me in my eyes that's that's me being present that's me paying attention to you and listening to you how do you feel mm -hmm. yeah and, and i and no go ahead i'm sorry Shanice. no i was gonna say you know and that's just what i that's what i work on with them so that when you said that word and i thought about the question max asked and i'm like being present when you were especially when it's with your children that creates a peace if you're present within a relationship it mm. creates peace because being yeah. present means you're listening mm -hmm. it means you're paying attention it means you're slow to speak and quick to hear yeah with my oldest um he's very quick tempered 
which mm-hmm. that was a version of me when I was 21. Mm-hmm. You said anything wrong to me, I'd be like, what the? I'd be all crazy and just, yeah, I wouldn't that's listen my middle. to anybody. That's my middle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then, so my middle one, she's also like that too, um, but she's a girl version of that versus my son is a, is a, he's a boy. Right. And like, I really had to tread lightly with those two um, because because of the the because I hurt them so much they're like hey man watch her she like she she trying to act funny she trying to be nice she trying to do this but like as they saw that my intentions were pure um as I did the small things to try to regain that trust they allowed me to come back into their space again mm. mm-hmm. 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 yep so, I mean even Oh, girl, believe me, I'm still working on that right now. My middle daughter. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a work it, in progress. it's almost a lifelong work in progress yep. to yep. Yep. establish that foundation of peace. And even then, as you're moving through the stages, your definition of peace is going to evolve. It's going to change mm-hmm. kind of like what Mike was saying earlier. You know what I mean? So there never really is a single set definition right. of what true peace is for you. Mm-hmm. It's always changing. You know, you're always yeah. going to be solving problems in life. And yeah, once right. you solve that problem, you temporarily get that oopsah, and then it's on to the next one, you know? Mm-hmm. I think like as we, um, for me, as I started to make the change within myself, I slowly saw my kids picking up on the changes that I was making. Yeah. And then I seen them yeah. like walking in my footsteps. So like in order for them to do what I'm saying, they have to see that I'm about what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. Your actions. Yep. It's about the action, not necessarily about the words. Cause like, you know, you can say one thing, but your body language dictates another and kids are, kids Mm -hmm. are on it when it comes to emotional intelligence. They're on it. With my son, I've, and I've noticed like even to now I'm 35 and I'm still learning. My son, just what Shani said, I, I give my son the opportunity to, you know, speak his mind too. So, and there was one time where I used to speak to him. Normally, I look like I got an angry face. And my son would, I would say something to him and then he would stop me. Why well, I look like you angry at me? But, mm-hmm. and I used, to, I used to explain to him, it's not that I'm angry. It's just, that's how my face is. But then he does what I do. I go off of people's body, body vibe. And he tells me all the time. Why, when you tell me something, why it looks like you're mad? But then I have to learn myself. I like, you know what? I gotta change the aura that I'm giving out when I when I'm telling him something. Mike That's got that one. resting hood face. That's why he always <laughs> look mad. Listen, <laughs> people at my job didn't talk to me for a long time because they just like, mad unapproachable. Right, right. <laughs> I was unapproachable, and I was but like, Kevin, you look good. mean growing up. No, when I first met you. I know I was mean because I was pissed off. My whole life I was mad. <laughs> <laughs> I was pissed off. <laughs> I was pissed off, man. Shit. Life was hard, man. Shit. You know how I was living on that damn block? I remember when I first met Kevin and Kenneth, I got cool with Kenneth first because he would give off to you. He's approachable. Kevin, oh no, shit, nah. Kevin had that face. Kevin had that face. Like, when I got to know him, I was like, oh no, nah, he mad cool. He just looked like I, that. <laughs> just so y'all know, I'm I'm 40 years old and I still have the same face. <laughs> That's a fact. Never That's a fact. Uh uh-uh. uh. Everybody has that one face. They gonna always make the rest of your life. And they just gonna look at me and be like, everybody at my job I'm cool with now is just like, yo, man, you was mad unapproachable. I'm like, all you gotta do is talk to me. You gotta get past that first phase. Yeah, okay. that's all you gotta do. That's it. Don't just look at me and be like, "Damn, this what the hell he mad about?" <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny, it's funny because um, me, me and Kev, me and Kev been friends for well over thirty years since we were eight years old. Yeah, yeah, and I never like first approach. It was no issue. Nope. I bullshit you not. First approach. It was no issue. You know what I mean? So it, 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 it's all about how you read. Um, while I'm thinking about it. Somebody got like an extra phone on or something? Oh, Lord. Somebody got, somebody drank hell loud, and I bet you it's felt in. There's felt in. There's felt in. I muted him. <laughs> <laughs> he got the Matumbo block. Yo, niggas just muted me, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> nah, but nah, ser- seriously though, somebody somebody in here earlier mentioned empathy. And Fran. I think, yeah. thank you, Fran, for that, because that is something that the previous generation to us mm-hmm. lacked. Yes. Yes. And sure. because of that, we ourselves lacked that knowledge of empathy. Like, as mm-hmm. we started living through life, we started slowly catching on to it. But there's a lot of us in this in this day and time that don't know what that is. They're just like my way or the highway. And right. honestly, I've been like that with my kids. You know what I mean? But now, like I said, because of these conversations that I'm having and stuff that I've been reading and stuff like that. And Fran, I cannot wait to dive into that book. I cannot wait because I know know there's gems in there and it was a pleasure to buy it. So I'm I'm going to just, this is going to be an advertisement in case y'all missed it on the first go around. You can jump through this video halfway through. Get the book. It's on Amazon.com right now. You got about nine books left because I bought number 10. Nine left. (laughs) So if you haven't bought it already, go buy it. <laughs> that's that's my promotional. Thank promotional. you, I appreciate that. Yeah, 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 no doubt, no doubt. But um, yeah, the empathy thing, man. That's 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 something that I'm slowly catching up to and learning because I want to catch my kids now so they pick right. up the ball earlier. Yeah. Empathy <laughs> is one of those things that's part of emotional intelligence, which. My man Felton was digging in the crates to talk about. I mean, we might we might as so well we might as well jump into that discussion real real quick about emotional intelligence, man. So Felt, tell us tell us about the different pieces to emotional intelligence, man. All right, so we were looking at me and Max today. We we're looking at um, the four pieces to so it's self awareness, self management, relationship management, and social awareness. Mm. So I'll go on. I'll go each over each square and we can discuss the, the points about it. So this first one is self, self-awareness, emotional self-awareness, accurate self-assessment and self-confidence. That's AKA recognition and self. That's the first box. What do you guys think about that? So I'll go over it one more time. Self-awareness, emotional self-awareness, accurate self uh, accurate self-assessment and self-confidence. What do these things mean to you guys? So pretty much piggybacking off what you said, like piggybacking off what you said earlier, when he was like, you know, it's pretty much thinking before you react. He said, you'll stop before you even say anything and assess the situation, and then you'll say something. So to me, that's self awareness. You know, that's thinking before I speak. Let me let me let me calm down first before I react on this situation. Because either like, the situation, I can either make it worse or I can make it better. But I won't know if I don't stop and think about what I need. What were the two other subset? The subsets. <clears throat> uh, we got emotional self awareness, accurate self assessment, and self confidence. Self assessment, man. That's that's really really what that comes down to is like you really have to know yourself. You have to be aware of what. What is it that sets you off? You know what I mean? And then your triggers, only, right? Right, your triggers, mm-hmm. exactly. So you have to look at it as okay, these are the things that I've noticed that I go off on. Then you got to take mm-hmm. it a step further and really look at okay, what can I do to mitigate that trigger? Because it's going to happen. You can't stop, you can't necessarily stop the triggers from happening. You know what I mean? It's 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 gonna happen, but what you what you got to look at is how can you mitigate against it? And that takes work. That takes time. That takes effort. Sometimes it takes therapy. Sometimes yeah. it takes um, having that conversation with your loved ones or your friends to get an outside perspective. You know what yeah. I mean? But if if you go through life and you're ignorant of your triggers, you're or choosing know. to be right, right, or choosing to be exactly. You know, mm-hmm. it's going to continue and it's going to continue to build and build and build. It's like rolling a snowball downhill from a mountain. It's going to turn into a big ass ball. No more effect. You know? I think I like I, Kevin, you know, me and Kevin, we talk about therapy. And then also, too, like I try breathing techniques. 
uh, when I feel like I'm about to get pissed off, I'll just like do like something called box breathing. You breathe in for four seconds, yes. hold it for four seconds, release it for four seconds, hold it again and do that for about two minutes. And that really helps. And then also too, I try journaling or writing down what I'm feeling at the moment. And it's definitely not going to be good because all those emotions are going to be on that mm-hmm. paper. But I think also too, like releasing it on paper allows the thought and the thoughts to be in a space where it no longer occupies your mind. Right. And that way you can utilize whatever that, you know, you have in there to find the solution to the issue. You know what's funny too? The one thing that calms me all the way down and this is going to be funny and it's going to sound a little stupid, but Christmas music. Huh. What do you associate with the Christmas music? Any, because no matter what happens, I don't know what it is. Like Christmas is mad calming to me. It's mad warm. First thing you think of, besides the gifts, a snowfall is the season itself. Right. It's the environment. It's the atmosphere. And when I hear Christmas music, that's just a tone. For me to be like, yo, I don't care about nothing else that's going on right now. This Christmas music got me zoned in. Like I'm straight tapped into the to the Christmas music. Listen to a Christmas song right now and tell me if you don't feel the same way. That's any of Christmas crazy. song. Don't even matter. That's dead. That's dead real though. That's true. I'm, I'm so serious. Except for the Grinch. Except for the Grinch. That get me turned up. Are you listening? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You can listen to all of that. You can listen to some of the Nat King Cole stuff. You can listen to the Donny Hathaway. Hey. You can listen to the Temptations Christmas oh, stuff. Oh, the Temptations. Mm. You took it way back. It's okay. something with that Christmas music, yo. And it could be the old school. Like, I remember, like, when I set up my Christmas tree and do all of that stuff, I'll put on YouTube, I'll put the eight hours of Christmas songs with the Christmas tree with the fireplace. Yo. That shit is mad calming. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah, sir. That's like me. Um, I I actually recently got back into um something along those veins of Christmas music. I got back into um symphony, classical yep. music, just like oh, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and 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 it hits hard. Like, I the uh, one of the first tracks I listened to was March of the Toy Soldiers, with um, and I'm gonna mispronounce his name, Tavoski or something like that. The same dude that, that wrote the Swan Swan song and, and, and all of that stuff, like Dance of the Swans or whatever. It's like, oh, God. It's just like, dun, 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 dun. and I'm like, I'm good. I'm zoning. Speaking of classical music, uh, there's something recently that I've been getting into is like frequency, frequency music. That works too. Yeah. That's yeah. good for uh, affirmations and all of that too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And there's different ones to help you elevate your um, happiness or yes. talks about abundance also healing your body so yeah. like if you look up like uh, somatics um mm-hmm. they'll give you like different fre- frequencies to look up to like target different ailments and stuff like that and it works on a cellular level mm-hmm. to help it regenerate whatever needs to be worked on yep that's, yep. that's pretty dope i recommend um insight mm-hmm. timer is an app that i use that does all of that you know, mm-hmm. you can you can time how long you want to listen to ambient sound. Mm-hmm. Um, you can listen to things like na- like raindrops, birds right. chirping, um, that's, that's what, music, like all of that. Like that's a it's a great app. I use it every day. That's, in the notes. That's, yeah, I'll put it in the notes right now. Yeah, that's that's something um I've taught my son and to this day he still now he does it on a regular where we go to sleep and listen to he listens to rain and thunderstorm. I like to listen to um um like nature sounds or whatever winds. But every night now uh, we've done it so much on his own. He'll put he'll go on his t- his iPad and put just thunder sound and he'll just leave it and then that would comfortably put him go to sleep. If it's not his his heat and pad because he bougie. Okay, his heat and pad to put his back and everything. Then he has his music and comfortably as a nine year old that he got a job twenty five he'll go to sleep with no problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that's something that I, I want to start really like promoting with my kids um, is um, because my kids, my kids know that I meditate, but it didn't really dawn on me until now. Like maybe that's something that can be very useful for them also, because do they teach that in school? Nope. 
You know what I mean? Do kids really get introduced to that? Not necessarily, but like I think I think that's something that I want to start, you know, introducing them to. You know what I mean? Like showing them like, hey, meditation, it helps calm you down. Like, you know, if you're having a hard time sleeping, you put on, you know, a certain type of music or whatever, like, you know, Taylor does that sometimes <laughs> when she goes to sleep. You know, yeah, also like too, sometimes, music, you know. sometimes being in nature. Um, there's something oh, called so grounding. Calming. Yeah, something called grounding. Like our bodies, because we wear tennis shoes now, um, our body disconnects us from the earth. Yes. And the earth is like a charging pad for us. Mm -hmm. So like, I may look crazy sometimes, but I'll go and I'll touch a tree. And the tree is supposed to transfer the negative energy from one hand yep. and the positive energy into, into us. That's earth. And it helps us. Earthing, it helps, yeah, earth. um, yeah, yeah, earthing. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if you guys know about that, that's definitely something I recommend you look into. It, it, it goes, it goes deeper with that with earth and like when you know how how you do you know hug the trees. Mm -hmm. Supposedly the tree takes all that bad energy and yes. then through the roots it takes yep. it away and yep. put it throughout the earth, but yep. leaves your good energy inside the inside the body. Same thing with putting yep. your feet in the grass and just either you're walking on the grass or you know, you're laying down and you have your feet and your hands in the, in the, in the, in the, the grass and all of that stuff. It's same process. The mm -hmm. other, the other thing is sunbathing. Yep. I love you know what I mean? the You're sun soaking time. all the, the ultraviolet radiation and you're just laying there and you're just chilling. Like I'll put on some lo-fi music and I'll just be like, that's it. Chilling. You know, you know, it's what they what, what Kevin was going back when he was going back saying, um, Christmas music is his um, anchor. Like for me to get me comfortable, besides like comedian comics, since a kid I've been obsessed with space. So I'll go to YouTube and YouTube look up wild different shit, right. black hole and different planets and different universes. But then that's something that you know it will calm me completely because yeah. then I'll get into something I want to learn or yeah. just want to know about and just tune out. And then mm -hmm. that right after like maybe 20, 30 minutes is more mellow, more calm. I can think clearly now versus how I was just, you know, 20 minutes ago. I'm, I'm going to say therapy again. <laughs> therapy, mm -hmm. yes, therapy, meditation. Mm -hmm. Therapy. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And I'm going I'm to just piggyback on that, like for real. Mm-hmm. I had a I, I had an interesting conversation with my therapist too, because there was a this is like slightly off topic though, but there was a a TikTok going around where people were saying was letting people know like yo you do know your therapist is not your friend right? So this one lady was like they're here they're there to do a job they're supposed to help you they're supposed to get you the way you need to go they're not your friend because there's a there's a big difference between your therapist and your friend right. And my therapist said straight up, she was like, I think that's funny because I've actually had my patients want to hang out with me outside. Mm -hmm. And I told her and told them, you're telling me everything that's, that's going on with you. You never noticed that I'd never tell you anything about me. There's a job I have to do. And this lady, the TikTok was funny, but I kind of feel bad for the lady, but it was funny as shit. She legit called her therapist on the phone and was like oh you want to go get a drink she was like oh do we need to set up an appointment for 12 on thursday <laughs> she like nah i was saying if you wanted to go out she was like so 12 on thursday <laughs> or is that too early do you want to make it 12 30 my shorty face dropped she was like damn she really don't fuck with me like that and i'm like no that's not what she's there for right yeah. i don't know i just thought that was funny and my therapist thought that shit was funny too. She said she was told all the time by her her patients, like, "Do you want to go get a drink or something like that?" She's just like, "No, that's not what we're here for." Mm -mm. And you know what? Go ahead, Shanice. I'm sorry. No, I said boundaries. That's all I said. Absolutely. Boundaries. Absolutely. Jeez. Speaking of boundaries, there's a good book called Boundaries. That'd be yes. something to look into too. <laughs> Ooh, you got, you got, you got, the, you got the author. You got the author to that. Uh, yeah, I think his last name is Levine. Hold on, just a second. Yeah, if you could throw that in the chat too, that'd be very, very beneficial. You know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm like, look, I'm, I'm soaking all of this up, man. Like all these different. Uh, like I started reading a book called um, Boundaries. It's called um, Set Boundaries, Find Peace. Uh, the boundaries work. by Nedra okay. Glover Tawab. Henry Cloud. 
Okay, and John Townsend. Okay. Okay. All right, since we out here promoting books, there's this book that I'm about to buy. It's called Atomic Habits. Yes. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yes. It's yeah, an okay. yeah. easy, yeah. improving way to build good habits and break bad ones. Yeah, yes. It's called That's Atomic my, Habits. That's on my no, list. Yep. I got Kindle Unlimited, so I'm definitely yep. tapping into that. <laughs> From James Clear, yes. Yes, sir. Oh, earlier, earlier we were talking about um, triggers. Mm -hmm. So there's this book called uh, "The Body Keeps Score," and I heard about that book. Yeah, yes. I think you mentioned that before too. Yeah, and so I don't know if I told you guys the story, but <clears throat> the guy he was in the army, and um, he, him, and his girlfriend were having sex. She put her finger in his mouth, and then he was like. She was like, uh, you give good head. I'm sorry for the kids that are listening to this. And it's a grown folk channel. The kids ain't here right now. I'm just saying if they happen to go through the YouTube. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> so he, he slapped her hand and he was like, bitch, if you ever do that again, I'm going to kill you. Mm -hmm. so come to find out the week before, um, she had called him and told him that there was um, there was a priest that was in the city that he grew up when and he was molesting kids and come to find out when she did that, that triggered a memory for that same priest come to find out that priest did that same thing to him. Oh, wow. So, oh. so sometimes like our body, it keeps score of those things. Wow. Like, you know, until certain things happen to us or say somebody says something mm -hmm. and then you're like, what the fuck did you just say? Or why this and why that? Right. That was a hell of an example right there. Yeah, yeah that was a hell of an example. It makes a hell of a lot of sense, though. It yeah, does. and then the um, he, he had to actually be one of the, um, I guess, witnesses against this priest. Come mm. to find out the accuracy of all the things that he told him was 95% um, <laughs> accurate. And only like 5% was like a little bit mis misconstrued. Fuzzy. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah but... I think he did that to quite a uh, quite a lot of people because they all described the room and the things that he did in the same way. Mm. So, damn. Yeah. That's crazy. So, I don't know if you guys think about it. Like, sometimes if you have a chance to, to meditate or like you're in a space or you feel like something like is bothering you, maybe ask yourself the question, you know, what are you feeling? How are you feeling? Mm -hmm. Your body might be trying to tell you something that you've suppressed for a minute. Another great thing to do um, is walking. Yeah. Oh my Another gosh. Another amazing thing. Hell, I do I do a live stream on my personal page every Friday, uh, Walk and Talk with the Ronin, where I have opportunities to just walk and talk about any given topic. And you know, when you're walking, especially when you're walking like in nature, like the color green does something to the mind. Mm -hmm. It promotes creativity and thought. So as you're as you're walking and you're seeing all this green, it, it's it's just boom. It's ideas start flowing in, and you're just like, oh, I didn't think about that. Like, oh, damn, maybe I should have approached this way. Maybe I'll do this instead, or you know what I mean? Like, sometimes you just got to get circulation. You got to get moving. You got to get momentum under you, you know, to, to, to really start to realize those things. Yep. Nature's lit, that, man. I mm. heard that um, our bodies and the trees, they're made of the same uh, chemical makeup. See, that, oh, wow. that I didn't know. I, know I didn't but, know that either. But um, something that I mentioned in a video, which I'm actually going to hang up this video on YouTube this weekend. Um, I was talking about nature uh, back in May. And uh, I, if you think about it, the makeup of a tree, you know, with the branches and everything, mm -hmm. you look at the tree, how it's made, and you look at our veins. Mm. Same concept. A tree gets its nutrients from the ground. Now, right. us as human beings, we have mouths, right. you know what I mean? But the nutrients flow all right. through our veins. Yep. So it's kind of the same concept, just like the nerves. The nerves are like tree branches too. You know what I mean? Our brain is sending signals through our nervous system to execute certain action or whatever. You know what I mean? So it's, it's it, every, trees, us, it's all connected, you know? 
Mm-hmm. Oh, she gone too. Yes. I heard that's also a good way to help like relief whatever relieve whatever stress that you might have in your body as well mm-hmm. and also help you be, to become one with yourself and everything around you. Yeah. Cleaning too. Yeah. Cleaning too. <sighs> yeah. As, yeah. As much, yeah. As, much it as, it, as much as it can be right? <laughs> a task but like keep it cleaning has its moments. But you know <laughs> Keep, no. keep keeping yourself busy though it does help yes no you keeping know, busy I, yes most help. definitely when i'm pissed off like cleaning that shit is therapeutic to me too mm-hmm. it really is let throw that music on, on top of cleaning listen bro i'll get my whole shit done in two hours i'm folding I think clothes we all... in my house with my kids but at my kids have to be home <laughs> i don't know why I do not know why, but I will clean clothes, and if they're with their dad, I will not fold them until they're home, and I don't know why. I but have ADHD. That's a whole mission for me. First of all, my my clothes is on my bed right now as we speak, folded. <laughs> just not put up three days ago, that was just been washed three days, and they spin. I'll just move it to the side. Let me just lay right here. <laughs> and I know people that do that. Yeah, move it to the side. Have you my guys girl. ever done that pissed off cleaning? Oh, oh pissed off cleaning is the best cleaner ever because you cleaning shit you ain't never cleaned before. <laughs> Man, I ain't never touched these motherfucking baseboards. These baseboards was dirty as hell. I'm like, get. Yeah. I ain't never seen behind this picture. God damn it! Right. You like, man, this shit dirty as hell. I'm like, oh, I really don't come back here, do I? That's crazy. That's some real shit. Then you, you get mad when you run out of cleaning thing. supplies and you storm to the store and you buy a whole bunch of cleaning supplies. Like I'm, I've done that. I've right. done that. I've spent hundred. Right, come out of there with two hundred dollars worth of stuff. Nah, no, I'm doing damn well. All you needed was one bottle of fucking. Right, exactly. <laughs> and then when you everything. Want- yeah. When someone walk inside your apartment and then they just, just smell nothing but Clorox and it bothers their whole breathing. Let me tell you something about that Clorox. Let me tell you what my mother used to tell me. My mother said, if you can't smell the cleaning supplies, then you ain't really clean nothing. You ain't clean no. shit. <laughs> you and my mother I was like, are you supposed to die because you can't I smell the bleach? Can. Like, no, I heard, I heard that same thing in the military. Yeah. We used to use. If you the, don't um, smell the product, you ain't clean shit. Yeah, we used to use that. Um, what the hell did they call it? It was like this green dot. Um, I was gonna say simple diabolical. green. Simple green. Yes. Thank oh, you. I got some of that too, but I don't mess with it. If That's you just smell, open, huh? if you can't smell the simple green on everything. It ain't clean. Do it. I re- I remember years, years ago, I don't know if people still do, I know they, I hope they not, but I remember my aunt, she was on my four floors with just a little bit of ammonia and some bleach. I said, why does it? I do that and it's You're not supposed to mix both of those. I'm like, like, why did I do this to myself? It's so strong, strong as hell. You're not supposed to mix both of those. I'm going to tell you that right now. (laughs) Yeah, you will die. (laughs) Immediately. Strong as hell. (laughs) She over there talking about, I don't know why I'm dizzy. I know why. You shouldn't be missing this shit. <laughs> you know, did it to yourself. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Mm-mm. Man, I love y'all. I don't wow. mix them, but I, I do love, use them. I love all y'all, man. I she love needs to stop. <laughs> just put that I stop. <laughs> stop. Not in that shell. Now she over there, but I don't mix it. It don't matter. Like, I still be dying, though, but it's supposed to be clean. <laughs> yeah, but then your lungs are all fucked up then. I know. <laughs> so what's the cause? I'm going to listen. I Them shit's on fire. You over there thinking you about to die. You like, I ain't doing that no more. I swear to God. Like, <laughs> you going to end up walking go around with a permanent eye and later. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Three days later. Walking around with the oxygen tank. Yeah, for uh-huh. you. You're going to fuck around and be COVID immune. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you got all them chemicals in your lungs. That shit going to burn it out. That shit going to dissipate all up in your lungs. That shit going to You got COVID, not me. You know how much pneumonia I just fucking inhaled today? I'm good. They, know, they must have listened to Trump. They over there drinking Clorox. <laughs> <laughs> Clorox. 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 Nah, she over there fucking inhaling that shit. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nah, man, I can't. I can't. Oh, uh, another thing too is yoga. Um, yes. that's also a good thing to help, like relieve stress. Also, like 
to check in with your body? My bones don't do right with yoga. I, 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 um, uh, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big girl, shit. I ain't got no excuse. So, yeah. look, everybody does it like this, and I'm like this. Yeah. Listen, you get an A for effort, okay? <laughs> They better give you that. As soon as I sit down, back problems and then my leg problems and then like, mm -hmm. it's over. And then you, you know what's another good thing to do? Life lock. You know what's another good thing too? Yeah. I bought one of these dry erase boards for my refrigerator, right? Yeah, yeah. It's always good to write different affirmations or different self oh, messages yeah. to yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah. Read it, out, read it out a couple of times before you leave your house every day. Nice. I got a side story on that one. Yeah. Go ahead. I have this big ass mirror in my bathroom. Mm hmm. And I go, it has all my affirmations on there. Mm. I come one day, the shit's missing. And then I'm sitting at work with my daughter. She goes, oh, mom, you still do your affirmations? I said, you know, I did have a mirror in my bathroom that I used to do it every single day. And she goes, I said, what about you? She goes, well, mom, I just got this mirror and I started doing my affirmations every day. I'm like, he said, Annie up and took your mirror. Wow. <laughs> just took it. Baby. But wow. on the bright okay. side, on the bright side, though, you got to give her a round of applause because that's that's right. something that writing the affirmations on the mirror thing is something that she took positively from you. Yep. True. So I mean, there's a, there's a trade-off with that. True. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I thought that shit was funny, like. The fuck? That's it. Is funny. She was, in, but at least you know you leading by example. And she right. took it and was like, "Mommy must be doing this for a reason." So let me try it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I told her one morning. I said, "Oh, baby, if you could use one word to describe your mom, what would it be?" She goes, <laughs> and I'm like, "What?" Wow. She goes, "Because, mom, every morning you're like always laughing at yourself. You're always like doing something goofy." And um, I was like, "Okay, well, I'll take it." <laughs> laughter is therapeutic right. man like yes. if you can't Fun laugh if you can't laugh at life matter of fact i'm gonna hit y'all with a quick quote now that i think about it this one get your pen out friend get it ready <laughs> she already got it and she know she know all right so the quote is from Humboldt, and I'll, I'll spell the dude's name in the chat matter of fact i'll throw the quote in the chat too but i'm gonna say it live real quick the quote goes they say that the truth hurts the only thing that hurts is my stomach from laughing so hard at life. Mm. And I saw that and I said, yo, that's a goal. Yeah, Start to laugh laughing. at life. Start laughing. At and that's all you could do. Everything. That's all you yeah, could do. Because if you take this so too seriously, bro, uh, you, 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 are con you are in control of your own destiny. You are in control of your own happiness. You are in control of your own just well-being. Yep. Now, if you sit here and take life seriously, that's exactly what life is going to give you. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. What you think and about, you bring about. <clears throat> yep. It all goes back to doing affirmations, too. Because if you do affirmations in the morning and you listen to your frequencies and all of that stuff, you can start to see yourself separate from the negativity, too. Yep. Mm -hmm. the acceptance and I've noticed that. And I'm just like... That's a big part. That you because... My friend sends me affirmations every morning. And then she's the one that told me about the affirmations. So I go on YouTube and I listen to the affirmations. I listen to the frequencies, yeah. to the nature stuff too. Everything everybody was talking about, I've been in tune with that. I don't do it as consistently as I should, but it's yeah. being done slowly but surely. Yeah. Anything you can do. You put in frequency through YouTube? Like what exactly do you put in? Because the first time I've heard you about You can put in like sound frequencies for like stress relief or just... You got white noise, brown noise. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the yeah. Brown noise? Um, did, yeah, brown noise. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, brown, no, brown, no, brown noise, for what I looked up, is more for like a spiritual opening your mind, like clearing your mind type shit. That's like with the chakra stuff. Like, yeah. yeah. That's what it is. But when it comes to doing that stuff with chakras, you have to do everything... One, one at a time. Don't try to over... And they say you're supposed to start from the bottom and work your way up. Doing it bits. Yes. Doing it bits. Yep. You have to start from the lower part of your body before you get to your mind because you don't want to you don't want to start on your mind and you not, you don't have everything else intact. Exactly. Exactly. But the stuff with the white noise, the stuff with the nature walks, that all of that's on YouTube. They got eight, nine-hour videos that you can really right. legit... 
Put it to the TV and just go to sleep to it. Oh, that's, that's okay. funny. Matter of fact, I'm looking yes. for something right now on YouTube that I'm going to Yeah, in I just put something inside of the chat, too. Yeah, for the okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, here you go. Frequencies for life. Yep. Cool. That works. That works. They got the stuff for sleeping and all of that stuff. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yo, the sleeping ones are so good, yo. Like, they be on it. I'm like, oh. Like, this is one of the ones for the sleeping joints. That's a nice little picture. And all you hear is just nature, background noise. That's it. I go to sleep with like rain sounds and stuff. I love like the sound of thunder and stuff. It's real relaxing. So I'll put that on. Yep. Yeah, I sent okay. an, I sent another one in the chat also. You know, okay. believe it and you know, believe it or not, people make money off of videos like that with just you they just do. show cut. Oh yeah. They they make great fucking money. Mm -hmm. Just making those videos and post to having an eight hour video. You yeah. know, with YouTube, when your views go up, you get more money. And oh, what's yeah. crazy, a young kid told me that. He was probably like mm -hmm. 25. He said, yeah, I make, um, I'll download the, the sound from somewhere and it matched up to a video and post it on my YouTube page. And I have multiples. And YouTube cuts the check. What's up? Yeah, because a lot of these, I'm looking at the views. Like this Rocky Mountain River joint, 40 million views. This was nine years ago. Mm -hmm. There's another million. one, six million views. There's another one, 110 views. Like people really listen to this shit because it calms yeah. them, it soothes them, yes. helps people sleep. Because everybody has hard times going to sleep and yeah. stuff like that. So this yeah. any type of background noise that helps too. Mm -hmm. But then with all of that noise, because you know you need a certain amount of hours of sleep, you know, make sure your body recharges right, so you're good for the next day. This stuff works. It really does. I think also too, like you know, we have to be very conscious of the things that we're putting in our body too, because I think yeah. that affects a mm, lot of our, our 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 chemical compounds of whatever you know. If you're putting toxic food in your body, like you know, processed foods and stuff, Makes all those anxious. things are not. Yeah, mm -hmm. all, I mean, there's ingredients in there that just aren't good for our bodies. Our bodies can't break them down like fresh fruits and stuff. Oh. So that also too like contributes to like good sleeping and things of that nature. Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. And then and the other piece, the other piece too is like routines. Morning routines, night routines, that's another big thing too because you know a lot of uh, there, there's people that have issues sleeping but they're watching like fighting movies. Right before yeah. they go to sleep, they're watching these TV shows that are ratchet as hell. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and and your mind is already like trying to process that information that you just grabbed. And oh, by the way, all those commercials and all that other stuff. Oh, I really want to get that handbag. Or oh, yo, that call was dope. And you're just thinking about that and you can't sleep. You know? Look at it this way, too. I'm going to tell y'all, like I tell everybody at my job, and I've been telling them this all summer drink your fucking water. Thanks. Yep. 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 All the time. All That's the my, time. That, there's no punchline. There's nothing up. Drink water. Facts. All the time. You drink, you're supposed to drink water before you go to bed. You're supposed to drink it as soon as you wake up. You got to drink at least. I try to drink at least a gallon of water a day. I, it yeah. was crazy. I do more. I, I, I could do daily. I'll go through maybe like 40 bottles. I, me, I drink water constantly. I love water. Yeah. Matter of fact, and it's not just, I'm about to get some right now. <laughs> And just so you know, too, another thing is like uh, everybody has their preference on how they drink water. I'm just going to tell you now, I drink room temperature water. It's better than yes, that. Yes, that's the best yes. water. Hey, yeah. I'm a big fan of Dr. Sabi. Yes, absolutely. I love room temperature water hit different. It helps you digest everything. Yeah. And, reach, and then when I found this out, I was kind of, I was taken back by it. Because apparently when you drink room temperature water, it makes you less thirsty. Mm. Mm. I didn't know that. There's a lot of lot of articles. I probably have to find it where they say a lot of cold water sometimes is just not good for the body because it just gives a quick shock to the nerve center that the nerve center is not really ready for. So cold water and too much of it as well. Yeah, Damn, you can I take like my cold, cold, cold showers are good. Yeah, cold yeah. showers are good. You just can't, you know, drink it. Drinking it, it. yeah. You shouldn't be drinking tap water, period, but, you know. Uh, well, we all, drink, we all did that. Well, all this, if you really think about it, all this water is just we fucked all. up. Yeah. <laughs> right. Have you guys, um, uh, there's a book called, um, it is called uh, The Hidden Messages in Water. It's by Dr. Emoto. Mm. And he shows, like, 
he literally writes down like words. Like let's say he put the word love and then mm. on one cup of water and then the word hate on another cup of water. And when he attached those words onto the actual cups, it shows like a pattern. So inside of the cup that has love, it shows like a, a symmetrical pattern. Yeah. And inside of the cup that shows hate, it's that it? a chaotic pattern. That's mm. it. It's a great book. Mm. Wow. But guys, think about this. Our bodies are made up of like 75% water. Yes. You think about the words that are coming out of our mouth or the words that are coming into our system. What just I like mean? those, just like those little written words mm -hmm. on that cup. Can you imagine how much that is affecting us as beings? Yes. Mm. And that water gets into our bloodstreams and it's circulating all through the body and all that. Damn, man, that's heavy. Yeah. Wow. And this is why they tell you to drink it. It's 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 a fine line bet between drinking water and drinking too much. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Because who knew that if you drink too much water, that shit can kill you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Too much yeah. of anything. Too much of anything will kill you. Yeah, that's a fact. You know? That's some shit you could kind of like parlay into something else too. I can't think of what I want to say when it comes to that, but there's something like with that too. It's like it's the law. It's the law of duality. Yeah, it's the law. Really, in everything, it's the law. There's a law of duality. It's a universal law. You know what I mean? I know we stopped Felton from going talking about emotional intelligence, but I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of help him out a little bit. Um, no, I'm back. I'm, I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't no, know, no. Felton, good. you got like a whole background and stuff in your background. I don't know what's going on. Yo, bro. I got so <laughs> much like, shit going on in the background. That's what happens when you like a parent. Yo, that shit don't stop. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. that shit do not stop. Can't stop. Yeah, I just had to change a pissy ass diaper real quick. <laughs> um, I do not miss that, bro. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I do not miss Yo, that. Listen, this not is this is it, man. This is the last. <laughs> he says, he says, he says, he says that. He says not, that now. I do not miss. Oh no, no, miss. no, no. We uh, that bridge has been burned. It's allegedly. Now, no, it's not allegedly. It's like the scene out of Batman. Hold on to your water, Max. Uh huh. I'm trying not to spit it out, man. I'm trying not to. I need it. I need that hydration. <laughs> no, nah, but we back to we back to emotional intelligence. Yes, right? yes, yes. So, all right. So we're gonna we got this from um. This is uh. Think First of all, you never gave your take. <laughs> my take. I never give my take because you guys always talk. So I just be quiet as a good host. I'm sorry. Shut the hell up. So I just let oh, the shit. organic conversation just go because I don't want to nah, dilute it. With my it's nonsense. all good. It's because you were introverted. We yeah, put you in, we put we putting you out of your comfort zone right now. Yeah, so I'll just I'll just shut the hell up. So I'll just let you guys talk. <laughs> all right, so it's your and turn just, now. <laughs> all right, it's my turn. So anyway, tonight's show is supposed to be about uh, emotional intelligence and the five components of emotional intelligence, according to Think Psych. And I will have the link in the uh, in the chat soon. But it's five components to it. So one component is the uh, social skills, being able to create and maintain healthy relationships. And uh, the second one is decision making, the ability to make responsible choices and accept their outcome. Mm -hmm. And the next one is empathy, the capacity to empathize and appreciate another perspective. Another one is self regulation, the ability to regulate emotions and actions in a variant of environments. And the last but not least is self awareness, the knowledge of one's own thoughts, feelings, and motivation. So that was way better than the other one that I had before. I think that was like Cobal perspective from like, 19, like from like 2001, but this one's way more easy to read and way more easy to, to break down. Yeah, it's, it's it, yeah, it was definitely broken down into more um, specifics, man, but I, I feel like the most important ones, I think, empathy, especially in this day and age. Um, yeah, empathy is definitely there. Empathy is like one of the hardest lessons I had to learn. Yeah. But then it's also like <clears throat> the main reason why I try to, the main reason I stay conflict free mm -hmm. is because I'm always looking at, always looking at the conflict in that perspective. Like this person is probably mad because of this. What was so your, if I know this already, Hamilton? huh? 
What was your empathy journey? You said that was one of the biggest things you learned. What? How did you yeah, get to that process? Just, that process was just like, just, I used to be very reactive and I used to just b- bounce off energy. So whenever someone gave me, I just gave it right back. Mm-hmm. And I found that those, those situations, I always lost because you can't really match anything. You know, matching is not really going to work out well. So someone has to be able to de and that the person who practices the de-escalation is probably the person with the higher intelligence, the higher emotional intelligence. They know what's wise enough for them in that moment. Right. And I always use that as a kid because I, I, I don't know. I used to always like always avoid fights. I don't know for some strange reason. I always talked it, talked it out of them. like, nah, we don't have to do this. Now. Like seriously, we gonna really, really do this now? Like <laughs> yeah. we're gonna get suspended. We're going to negotiate a couple of days. <laughs> Yo, and I used to, man, listen, and, and, and it worked even as an adult, like, you know, dealing with people who just always volatile, like you always have to just lay it down to them. And sometimes if you really just sit back and really think about it, you know, it's really not that deep, but that's just the way I think about it. So there wasn't like one particular like turning point in your life where you were like, oh shit, I got to stop I think reacting. Would. No, boom, I got it. It was recently with my spouse. I had to practice that. I had to really put myself in her shoes. And when I did that, it kind of changed the dynamic of the relationship and how I communicated with her. Because I had to really realize that the person that I was trying to really communicate with didn't really have that really, didn't have good communication skills, wasn't really taught that, and had difficulties you know, communicating that. So when I realized that, I had to really, it really humbled me for a quick second because I really wasn't, I was always argumentative, always arguing, trying to get this point across. You're just being stubborn and you're not not being agreeable. And I'm just like, wait a minute, fell. Like, look where this person's coming from. If this shit was not taught to them, you know what I mean? Then they don't understand. So you're, what are you really going to argue against? Yeah. Person, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really had to break it really break it down like that. Like, what is this person? What are we really arguing against? She don't know. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. You don't know what and you don't know. And I can't be mad at her. Yeah, she don't know. Yeah. She don't know what she don't know. And I can't be mad about that. I have to just learn how to accept it and try to enlighten and, and hopefully change, change behavior. But yeah. if they don't That's know, powerful. they don't know. And that, that's really what it was. And it was, it, it took a moment. And I'm talking, we had some real rocky shit, man. Like, we was arguing every day. Like, I'm pretty sure my children are completely traumatized. The first two, like you said before, like, the first two got the brunt of, like, our relationship. Each, each of my child represents a moment in my life where something changed or something turned. Yeah. You know? And it was a twist and turn. That's why I look at, uh, how's I look at them? It's, 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 it's a beautiful thing. Beautiful, but traumatic thing but it's it's like i like you guys were saying before like i really agree with that like each child definitely represents a moment mm-hmm. you know, i got three of them so i got I, it's three moments you know i mean two of them were born in brooklyn and i got one baby from fucking day county <laughs> <laughs> shout out to so, miami day yeah, shout out to miami day county i was a plug out there sorry uh, <laughs> but yeah, man. Like, I got two kids from Brooklyn and, like, two kids, or, like, a kid in, in Florida, so I got a lot of shit going on. So... That was man, powerful, was Felton. That was crazy, man. Thank you. Yeah. But that's why I don't talk, because then I take over the whole conversation. And- no, 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 no. I mean, that it's, it's a good thing that you're talking, because there's people out there that are going to be watching this thing, or all watching it now, that may not necessarily have the courage to come out and, you know, that. share their experiences so you opening mm-hmm. up is is a hell of a big kudos especially for someone mm-hmm. that that is in the threads of being an introvert you know what i mean it's valuable. yeah it's valuable and then I, i'm definitely i don't know why i developed that when i was like i don't know as i got older and people we started moving away from each other i just naturally just became like i, I don't know a person like me i just i don't know what it is and I've been really trying to research about it, but it's, it's really bothers me. I had a moment, right? I'm going to go in with you guys for a second. And this is a, a confession from the introverts, right? This is why I knew I, really, I was really secluded. 
So my grandfather passed away last year, right? You know, I spoke to him a week before he passed. Right? So I'm talking to him. And he's like, yo, why you never called me? And it just hit me. Like, yo, you really, you really don't say anything to anybody. You're really in this fucking shell. You really got to get out of this shit. And he passed away seven days later. And I think it was like two days after his birthday. And that was the last conversation I have talked about it, a whole bunch of shit. Mm-hmm. But that was one of the final moments where he broke it out and was just pretty much like, hey, why you know, call? Like, I wasn't expecting that from my grandfather. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was just one of those moments. It's a realization like moment. That. It's a realization moment, man. It's shit like that, man. Yeah, so back to emotional intelligence, it's it's that, man. It's really being able to, like, juggle within a couple of seconds, like, conflict internally and externally. Yeah. That That's emotional intelligence all in but one. But then it gets deeper because at the same time you're fighting that battle, you got to realize you're giving out uh, emotion to your circle as well, too. So that's what, yeah. what I was talking about earlier. When you're fighting that battle, you got to control your emotions because your emotions is a big trigger, too. Because your emotions it is, can make man. you... It really is. But, so let me ask you a question, though. Uh-huh. How long you been holding on to that? Yo, honestly, man, I've been holding on that for a while, man. That was pretty... That was really one of the hardest moments of my life. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. Like... And it was hard for me to lose a relative because I never lost anyone. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I've been, I've been on this earth for 34 years. I haven't buried no one. He was the first person who we buried in like years. Talking about my immediate family. He was 82 years old. So that shook, you know what I'm saying? A lot. That shook a lot. It's pretty death defying for me because it was like losing the dad. I never, you know, I never knew that mind. Mm-hmm. So that was like the only rep- representation of a male figure that I seen that was like, all right, you got to work hard and you got to get a car and a crib and then you should be chilling after that. <laughs> so, and, and he won, he's the one who, he's the one who really didn't really, we didn't really do much together, but it was just, just seeing him was enough for me to feel like, all right, I got to be able to do this. Prior to that conversation with your grandfather, what was when was the last time you had spoken to him or spent time with him? I mean, prior to that, we usually just did holidays. And I just have a weird family dynamic. So we're not really communicate. We don't really communicate like that. I think a lot of us fall into that kind of Don't we all? Yeah. Don't we all? Yeah. It's kind of of weird because it's like my family is like, you know, it's small too as well. Like it only gets it's two, it's three sisters and my uncle. So, and they don't have children. My uncle doesn't have any children. And my mom and her sister are the only ones who had kids. So it's only like fucking six of us. It's fucking small. <laughs> it's small. I'm not even and we close to my real family. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, we're not, I don't talk to any of them like that. Yeah, like we're kind of like black sheep, like weirdly in my family. I don't know, I don't know why, but it's just a bunch of bullshit. Right? But, Sadly, that's that's the norm. Yeah, yeah. that's the norm, man. You know, that's the norm. But yeah, Kev, that took that, that took a while for me. I had to literally let that one go. That was that was that. And then back to that one when I really like em- emphasized, like how you can say the word fucking verbal diarrhea yeah. right now. Well, um. It's not, no, empathy. Sorry, but I'm trying to look for the word, the adjective of it. Excuse All me. right, I'm gonna finish this conversation. Uh, I gotta get off because my daughter got some Girl Scout shit tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, good, uh, father's job is never done. Um, <laughs> flies, all of that stuff. Fran, as soon as I get the chance, I'm gonna get that book. I'm all, all right. about supporting. I'm with all of that. So thank you for sharing that, because trust me, that should have made you feel a little better now. It kind of puts everything into perspective. Yep. Uh, yeah. Mike, allegedly, you still doing your job, but we're not going to talk about that. Allegedly. <laughs> Shanice, we don't know what you're doing, but I see a bonnet, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. She getting ready for bed. Max, holla at me. If anything, I'm around. Word, man. Bye, Kevin. Everybody have a good night, man. Appreciate you, man.
Yeah, yeah. I am but, doing uh, my work. Don't talk about that. <laughs> see, uh, see, he get he getting his shirt on right now. He done did his dirt. He getting his uniform shirt on. <laughs> Shout well, out to no. the security firm that hired this man. <laughs> don't put the shirt yeah. on now, bro. <laughs> Nah, this is gonna get edited now. I'm not trying to blow up this. I, I gotta go do my job. <laughs> oh, yeah. Allegedly. What? Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> oh man. But um, yeah, Felton, man, that that's heavy, man. That's that's yeah, that, that's definitely not easy to um come to terms with. And sometimes in life, man, we 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 have these tragic things happen that serves as symbology to us that then puts us on course to make the necessary changes in our life that we need to make and you know even in even in that you know we got to be grateful for it because you know when you do reach that je destination and you reflect back on that journey you're like everything makes sense everything was worth it you know um but uh, yeah, man, this this emotional intelligence thing, man, it's it's big. Um, you alluded to um, the communication between you and your spouse, and that ties right into social skills. I think, you know what I mean, and, and it's social skills on your end, social skills on her end as well. You know, she doesn't know what she doesn't know, so y'all got to meet in the middle, especially when you have a family life at stake. You know what I mean? Um, so crucial. Me Go ahead, friend. I'm sorry. Nah, that's crucial. I um, like when I was married, my husband was like you, Felton, um, very intelligent. Like I didn't really have any communication skills, and so I don't even know if I would have been in the space to actually accept what he was saying for us to grow. So I really put my hat off to you because that really, um, you just leveled your partner up. Mm -hmm. And that's, it, it's amazing. I really appreciate people that take the time out to invest um, for the bigger picture. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I definitely agree with that too. Cause I think hey, that's what that was, I had to use that. You know what's crazy? <laughs> is what Fran just said and what a lot of people, I even I have to learn myself in a relationship. When you level each other up, that's the best part of growing with each other. That's the truest form of love right there. That's part yeah, of it. Yeah. Part of it. It's yeah. not about what you can get. It's really about what you can give. Like and, instead and it, of and it, 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 it re it refuels the cycle. You know what right, I mean? You, right. you, you gotta look at it as kind of like a a, a a a fission fusion reactor. Right. You know what I mean? Right, you got right. two different forms of energy and y'all both just feeding each other and building more combustion for lack of a better term you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so kudos to you thank you for that felton that was uh that was heartfelt i, I could relate yeah, it's definitely not easy man um, you. creating and maintaining healthy relationships that's another big one um that's yeah. that's that's a lifelong work in progress, to be honest with you, because everybody is going to have their own different personalities, their own quirks and vulnerabilities and all that stuff. And, you know, you also have to look at your tolerance level for those vulnerabilities. Are their vulnerabilities are absolute red flag for you? If so, mm -hmm. why? You know what I mean? You got to do all of that thought process before you go in oh, face right. first into a relationship in this day and age, you know? Yeah. Um, it's funny because like now that I think about it, and like my kids, like I'm the hot-headed one. Wow. My my what? ex, he's the cool one. I I look, I used to be very, very hot-headed. I'm cool now. <laughs> <laughs> but like um my kids say now, like when mm -hmm. we're getting into like some kind of like discussion that's pretty heavy, well, and they're so like nice. Oh, Stop. cool heads prevail. Get on the bed. And I'm right. like, where'd you get, get that from? Bed. I was like, oh, dad. Get so, on the bed. I don't know if Felton really realizes that, like, the things, how, like, I know what we were taught when we were younger, like, the parents would tell us to go into the room 
But I think the most powerful thing is when the kids see us have these communication, this mm -hmm. open communication, this open dialogue, it teaches them how to have that same dialogue. Like don't close the door behind them to not let them know because then they don't know how to have these um, these difficult conversations. You're now mm -hmm. giving them the tools to be better communicators and to also utilize that in different arenas in their life. Yeah. So I think closing the door on the kids while you're having your arguments or what have you isn't a good thing. But mm -hmm. like when you do have like a person like Felton with that kind of behavior, he can help de-escalate it and the kids will see, okay, this is how I'm supposed to act in this situation. Right. 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 And, it, and it's funny that you say that. It's just because how, when, you know, me coming up raising my son, I've always told, you know, his mother disagreed with me where, I want to be the one to disappoint my son because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I'd rather me teach him how to deal with disappointment rather than the streets teach him how to deal with disappointment. Right, right. Like I would yeah. disappoint my son constant, not constantly, but on a day to day basis, just to show him things don't always go your way. But then I want to be the one to be there to tell him, but this is how you're gonna have to deal with it. This mm -hmm. is that the actual the reaction that you need to deal with because the world ain't pretty. Right. The world's going to pick you up and slap you down. And if you have emotional problems, you're going to get chewed up. You'd be lucky if the world picks you up in this day and age, especially yeah, in the social right. media it, era. It, it'll roll where, right over you. Where, you know, like like you were alluding to, Fran, and I'm glad you brought up the, the showing how to really communicate because this day and age, everything's, everything is digital. Like yeah. the kids in this generation don't really know how to hold a conversation outside of texting or yeah. hitting a heart right. on somebody's social media page. Like they don't understand the dynamic of having a one-on-one face-to-face -on -one conversation, mm -hmm. you know, and we need to teach our kids that because they need to then teach their kids that. And the cycle mm -hmm. needs to continue. Otherwise it's going to die out and we're going to yeah. be hurting. You're yeah, going to mess yeah. around technology going to get cut. How are we going to communicate? Or who no, you're going to be like Scooby-Doo. <laughs> but then there's there's a little upside to you know technology to help you know the kids that's dealing with that because tell you the truth, COVID taught good and bad because yes. when COVID happened, it gave a lot of introverts the voice that they don't have when that's, they come out to the world. Absolutely, they COVID gave them COVID told us to stay home. Yep. To an introvert, you ain't telling me nothing. Cause I got my PlayStation, my internet, and my pizza rolls. I'm good for three, four days. I'm in, I'm in, tr I'm in the <laughs> treasure room right now. I'm straight. So now, when COVID happened, a lot of these introverts was like, you know what? This is my time to put a camera on and speak my piece. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. tell the world what I go through, how I teach myself. Mm -hmm. So it's you know sometimes in, the internet is a bad thing, but to some of these kids, these introverts, it's helping them. It's a double edged and, sword. Yeah, exactly exactly yeah. yep so and ideally to to retcon my earlier statement like you got to know how to do both yep you got to know how to communicate face to face and you also need to know and be in tune with the times you know what i mean so to to, to balance those two elements out yeah. you know it's best to have both you know what they say two heads is better than one so same thing yeah. applies with communication yes yeah, like no matter what people say, like the things that we teach the kids, they they're going to utilize it in whatever arena they're in, work, school, uh, their love relationships, mm -hmm. all of that. Like, regardless of what we don't want them to do, we show them what how to respond to situations every single day. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't like the way you're responding, you know, you need to check yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's true. That's true that. I mean, otherwise the kids would do it for you and they're pretty good at that. Like that, oh, you yeah. just said this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, Mommy, you just did this. Well, why are you doing it? <laughs> and then the realization hits you. They're like, oh shit. Don't say that word. That's a bad word. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate that. I think I think us as adults, we actually learn more from the kids than they learn from us. Yes, I've learned a lot from my son. Uh, because just like he's a, he's a, they're, they're, they're the image of us. 
So I've got to learn, like, damn, I went through that. So I know as a parent how to fix it. But then now I got to deal with my old self and my child. Yeah. 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 All in one package. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I was, in, I was in a good package back then. <laughs> You're not the only one, Mike. Yeah. We, we, all, we all had our ratchet moments. So I mean, mm-hmm. You know, when we don't, we don't want ourselves to do that again. So we hold ourselves, AKA <clears throat> our kids accountable. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's true. Um, so I want to shift gears from emotional intelligence real quick. And I want to ask this question in light of what transpired last week since we're talking about pieces paramount and handling triggers, okay? What is more important to you? Peace, revenge, or being proven right? Depends on what stage of my life I was in. Okay. Um, Fran, Fran, Fran's getting ready to, she's just like... <laughs> I'm saying she needs you so dang right because it's like <laughs> catch I'm me 20 right years now, earlier right I'm just right like I'm gonna say peace right now but if you would have asked me not even a year ago right <laughs> it was like it was to be to prove you like to let you know that I'm right or not even right just like to make you hear me I don't care if I'm wrong you're gonna hear me you know what I mean you're gonna not you're not gonna keep taking my voice away you're gonna hear me I've never seek revenge. Um, I honestly don't think anything good comes from doing that. But you know, there's people, there's people that are programmed that way. They think, well, an eye for an eye, a tooth from a, for a tooth. If somebody's gonna steal from me, I'm gonna steal bigger. Yeah, you no, know you're I mean? right. There are people that and, think that and, way. And they're driven by that. Just like, and I'm glad you brought this up, Shawnice, where you mentioned you want to be heard, even if you're not necessarily right. However, there's, there are people that will purposely start a fight with you and fight so hard to prove themselves right. They don't even want to be heard. They just want to be right. You know why? I think that those people, for whatever reason, cannot get rid of a trauma that made them feel so small. Mm. So now, that right on the nail, girl. So yeah, now, right when, there with the hammer. Right when they get to a point in life where they feel they have strength, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now it's like now I'm gonna let y'all see that I'm not small. Right. But it's like it's years too late. Whereas mm-hmm. now, already like, heard too. Yeah, you like you still want to. They still want to be heard, but they want to be heard for something that either no one remembers or no one cares about or no yeah. one sees as big as they see it, yeah. you know? So I don't know. I think people like that, you just, you just gotta let them, let them do what they do. Let I mean, you have to, li- right, like, do you have to listen and sit there? No. Um, if they're close to you, um, I guess it depends on how how much you value the the bond, the bond and the friendship. I mean, you could, um, you could sever. You could you could love from a distance too. Like facts, if you feel like it's very, it's very not true. getting to a point where it's constructive. Yeah, if it's not becoming any better, like, if it's always something that happens or <clears throat> always something that seems to, if they always feel like they need to make you see that they are no longer small. That's called self. You that's 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 internal. Like there's yeah. nothing we can do about that. After a while, it's like, listen, I love you, but you are draining me mm-hmm. of energy. And I am trying to preserve my energy and I cannot continue to give it to you. Right. So <clears throat> therefore, I'm gonna step back, especially if you're refusing therapy <laughs> or you're giving every excuse in the book as to why you have no time for therapy. Wait, say, what, that like, t- what, say that T word again. Therapy. What people don't understand is like, it helps. Just talk to somebody, someone who's unbiased, who does not know you, who does not have any idea of who you were 
in the past. They want to know who you are now and how they can help you heal from who you were or what happened to you in the past. You know what the you know the downside of that what people don't understand. You can talk and talk and talk to somebody, but are you listening to what Facts. they're saying? Right. Because it's just like the simple body structure. You got two ears and one mouth. You have mm-hmm. to listen to them more than you speak. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, so, maybe I gotta go. Yeah. So my homegirl, right? Her, she has a very close friend of hers who is always, always coming to her about the same thing. The same thing. Situations are no better. And and I tell her, so she'll come ask me my opinion. And I'm like, you need to choose you. At the end of the day, I understand you care about her. And I understand you say she has no one else. But at the end of the day, some people don't want to be saved. Some people don't want the help. Some, some people, people are, okay. are, are, they are already right. too into the darkness where they right. think the darkness and the negative is the law. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they think, and it's like the people who funky, we yeah. smell them and they <laughs> smell themselves. Yo. They to that right. shit. <laughs> Yo, right. as soon as you said funky, like I immediately smell bo. That's crazy. See how the, the mind, the right. mind. Is like, something. That's what I'm saying. Like, but I can smell true, somebody like... in Central Park right now. Matter of fact, I can smell somebody in Grand Central Station right now. Right. I gotta make sure my house is clean a certain way because I have a dog. If I don't mm-hmm. keep my house clean a certain way, when someone comes in my house, they're gonna say, "God, it smells like dog in here." I'm like, "What you talking about? I don't stink." <laughs> but if I don't sit here and step back and say, wait a minute, something's not right and fix it, then I'm just going to be looking like a fool. But unfortunately, you got people that love, they just love to sit in that dark. They love to sit in that sadness and that same old story. And it gets old. Like, I mean, because it gets attention. Right. It gets attention. And it's yeah. like, yeah. maybe that's maybe that's what they're craving. Something they yeah. never had was attention at one point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they attention. know that, validation. oh, you're going to hear me now. So yep. you get the attention. Yep. When they don't realize, but doing that, it's only but so many bridges you can burn and think you're going to come back from. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you're not going to keep burning the same bridge. If you're tired of hearing your friend talking about that same thing, like, uh, divert the conversation. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah, you told me that last week. Oh, I'm thinking of, girl, I'm about to fix my um thingy majigger or whatever you're going right, to fix. Mm-hmm. Right, right. I mean, just, I had a friend like that. And like you said earlier, I had to cut her off. Even yeah. my son, my son was like that. I had to cut him off for a whole year. Mm-hmm. And this is my son. This is my oldest, my only yeah, son. Like flesh and blood, yeah. Yeah. And as much as I loved and wanted him to see my point of view, the only way he could see it was to be in seclusion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like now when you sat there and you all alone, mm-hmm. you don't have anybody to listen to your no pity party. No distractions or anything. Yep. yep. That's when it hits you. That's when yep. reality really hits you when you in, you confine them four walls of solitude. Yep. You know. You hit rock bottom. Totally. Yeah. Hit rock that's bottom. Why, that's why, you know, significant emotional events like that are super important because it's it you can say something to someone a thousand different ways and right. if, if they don't want to get it, Mm-mm. they're not gonna get it. But when yep. she hits the fan and they get in a situation that forces them to change trajectory, then it's like the aha moment yeah. takes mm-hmm. place. The excuse yeah. of this is my sign. This is who I am. This is how I'm built. No, 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 yes. no, no. Like you said, oh. it's an excuse no. to stay and be in right. the same place. It's, it's, right. Yeah. Like, we, like at the end of the day, you have, it's called accountability. Yeah. Ownership. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like that's all self reflection. That's it. It pretty much circles back to what we were talking about. Like, you have to be able to, the, the emotional intelligence, step back and mm-hmm. self reflect, assess, yeah. assess the and, situation, right? Assess yeah. it. And mm-hmm. then you can't hold on to everything. And I don't, I don't think people don't understand that. Do you like holding on to things kills you faster? Oh, yeah. My partner, he, um, he says this all the time to me. He said, a setback is a setup for the comeback. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. So, or like, or like my man Mike Paradox said, I don't take losses. I I take lessons. lessons. Yep, you learn. That's it. Stole that one. Some of them are hard <laughs> lessons too. You know what I mean? 
Mistakes are the great, the mistakes are the perfect lessons. They're the perfect teachers. Man. You know what I mean? You got to be grateful for them. When something's fucking up, you got to get into the mindset of universe, what you got in store for me today? Yeah. What's the lesson you're trying to teach? And it's not easy. You're going to be emotionally charged initially. But if you can de-escalate yourself, that's the goal is to de-escalate yourself mm -hmm. so you don't let those triggers get pulled that in turn hurts yourself and hurts others around you because you mm -hmm. don't realize it. Mm. When people act like that, especially when they have plans in place for themselves, what they don't realize is when you start making people not want to be around you, you lose that support. Yeah, and everything you work hard for starts to crumble mm -hmm. and unfortunately the first thing most people in that situation do they blame everybody else they won't take they accountability they won't they won't they won't realize that it's them it's like oh fuck it's y'all you late. wasn't down the ride with me you showing right. your cool colors you doing this and you're not mm -hmm. up to my standard and you know y'all y'all don't know about hard work y'all don't know what i've been through and all this stuff. like yes we do but you are not necessarily somebody that channels that 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 energy that's necessary like you bringing in all this extra stuff right and it's not jiving and i'm not about yep. to sacrifice my peace right to right. support that yep right just because we all smile like people i think i don't think people realize that it's like i don't forget one of my close friends and me and her was talking having a real deep conversation like there's a lot of stuff i didn't know about her and then when I was telling her things for, from about me and things I went through, she, she was like, wait, what? Mm. I thought your dad was always, you no, know, my dad was locked up. And when he was home, he was high off crack mm. and everything else. Oh, my we had the smile, same dad, Shani. Yeah, my, my, <laughs> yeah my, dad, my dad did not get clean from that until I was in high school. So my, my childhood was going to Rikers Island, going to Virginia to go visit my father, having to, like, but people, all people see was is Rikers Island smiling. a jail? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, going to see all that people seen was me smiling, me laughing, not realizing a lot of pain I carry behind that smile, not realizing the stuff I was going through at school. My mother working two jobs and going to school, so we a latchkey kid. Got things going on. By the time she get home, it's already over. What's mm -hmm. latchkey, guys? Got, latchkey kid you know come home by yourself we had our keys so, on us so those we latchkey our doors, kids but... are, are, are adults that that became children that became adults at like 12. oh okay right. so, yeah dang. like we was just watching right, so ourselves and yeah the, yeah they, they, they already the advanced like, course of the hard knock life yeah they, they pretty much were like cooking meals already like yeah, yeah washing kids. dishes at four like, yep yeah, yeah pretty, pretty, much. Much. <laughs> pretty much watching over their siblings helping out with the homework Yep, like I'm going to work to open my damn door. Chinese um, my fucking twin. <laughs> girl, oh, but I just don't think people realize that like everybody goes through things. You yep. cannot keep, con you cannot continue to use that excuse so that it looks acceptable for you to act the way that you act. Mm -hmm. You cannot keep coming off and attacking the people that you call your brothers or sisters. You cannot do that. Because what's going to happen is those people are going to detach themselves from you because at this life is too short and you are not going to sit there and disturb the time I have left because I don't know how much it is. Mm -hmm. yep. And I don't think people realize that. Mm -hmm. Like if you're not willing to work on yourself correctly, you cannot expect everyone else to do it for you because we're all trying to work on ourselves as well. We're all trying to, we're all pouring from a cup into each other. But if our cups are empty, we can't, we can't give you anything. You can't Come on, girl, anything. preach. You cannot <laughs> nourish anything with an empty cup. Like, right. I don't think people understand that. Like, people don't realize that. And unfortunately, it's, it comes down to respect. Mm -hmm. Do you respect me enough to stop and look at yourself and see what you are doing. Mm. Or do you respect yourself enough to walk right. away from the situation? I was just about to get to that because you got to respect yourself first. Yeah. And that is a no. First. That's a no. We no, in our no, 30s. No. You cannot, like, if we sat there and held on to everything we went through as children, <laughs> we'd be screwed. You silly. 
<laughs> Girl, you aging just fine. You <laughs> right. I would have never known you was in your 40s until you told me. <laughs> At all. I sure know what what when they say black don't crack, brown right. don't crown, boo. Nope. <laughs> right. Nope. Because I would not have known until you said it. The 40s is the golden era. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> No nah, man. Uh, I mean, I, I choose peace too. Yeah. This at this particular phase, like Shani yeah. said, like peace is the true wealth. Like I don't need to be right. right. If, if 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 me being right comes at the expense of destroying a bridge that helped me cross to my final destination by way of a person. Nah, man. Walking right. the bridge is the easiest course of action to take. Why am I going to jump in a raft? and go through rocky water right i told my ex-husband i said if you want to paint me as a villain i'll let you Mm. but i'm not gonna keep going back and forth because and and unfortunately like he holds things my ex-husband will hold things and bring things up that happened freaking 10 years ago oh and it's like speaking of that shani's like that book like that particular thing that you're referring to holding on to something like I don't think sometimes we realize we have the different versions of us stuck inside yeah. of us like we can be um what is what is that I'm looking for we can be unevolved in particular areas in our lives mm-hmm. like that little kid is still hiding in there yeah. or right. that teenager that never got the affirmation that they needed yeah right and because that. they, yeah, and because they haven't let that out in whatever way that they needed to in a healthy manner, um, they hold on to that shit. And then here goes that cycle of blaming yeah, and holding on to stuff and not being yep. able to release it. Mm-hmm. So like that book, The Body Keeps Score, mm-hmm. it really talks about some shit that you're like, oh my God, I can't believe that. Yeah, like I, I saw pieces of myself in that book yep. and it. I gotta read so that. Have, I heard about that book on a podcast. Someone mm-hmm. had mentioned. Yeah, that book. it's so powerful because, like, right now, I I told you guys about my son, right? That's mm-hmm. in jail. Yeah. So he's reading that book, and then my other daughter, um, the oldest one, she's reading it too, and I'm listening to uh, on audio. Yeah, yeah. But like, as we're having conversations, we're all looking at pieces of ourselves through the book, and yeah, it's really yeah. been helpful to like once again create that platform of conversation and trust right. and mm-hmm. try to work through that trauma right right absolutely absolutely it's, it's that's a what lot it's about. Man. that's what it's about man like it's not it's not about being right or proving yourself right to have that chip on your shoulder like yeah i sold that motherfucker like okay but you showed that person how narcissistic and ignorant you are Mm-hmm. You know, you're oblivious to the bond with said person that you have for X amount of years is more important than you being factually correct on something. Right. Like, you know, or, well, my standard is the only standard that matters. Everybody else has to follow it. Everybody needs to be this certain type of way. Like, no, no, nobody's going to be like you. Everybody's cut differently. Oh, Very. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you can't, you can't expect every single person that you come across to be this certain type of way like people ain't gonna like you either (laughs) facts let's call it what it is we're not everybody's cup of tea and we have to be okay with that and I think I had to learn that like growing up I had to realize everyone is not gonna like me just because I want to be like everyone is not gonna like me I am not gonna be everybody's cup of tea and as I got older I'm like you know what okay that's fine it is what it is yeah but you have to be be okay with that when I was younger. Say it one more time. I said I thought I had to be liked by everybody when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the same. Wanted to be accepted. Yeah. It was like it was yeah. trying to yeah. be accepted by people. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. That feeling of acceptance. But it's just like at what cost? Like, are you serious? Yeah. yeah. I think even like recently too, um, because I didn't know myself, I'd say like maybe five years ago. I, when I was with men, um, I actually would turn myself into a form of whatever that they liked, whatever they were into, because I didn't know myself. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I can't even you know, go back five years. <laughs> <laughs> so like now that I'm in a space where I'm affirming who I am, because 
now I'm listening to uh, the little person inside of me, Mm -hmm. affirming like the things that I love, affirming the spaces where I don't feel comfortable. And it's like, well, I really don't care if you don't like me. Yeah. It's not about Um, the likes. Yeah. It's more about, like we were talking about earlier, about that peace within ourselves. Mm hmm. Yeah. Could I go to sleep and lay my head down and be okay with the decision that I just made? Yeah. On whatever it was. And if not, what can I do to rectify? Right. You know, right. Max is like my second therapist. So, like, Max knows everything. So, like, for me, it's like one of those, it was always being afraid to lose someone. Oh, yeah. Feeling like, if I lost them, my world would end or feeling like, you know, maybe if something happens to you, it like, to, like having that blame, that, that, that blame for it, you know, because maybe if I would have kept them close, nothing was something that would have never happened. And then I had to realize like the good, the people that mean you well are not going to make you feel this way. Right. You're not going to feel like you're going to lose them if something happens. You're not going to feel like you're going to lose them if you speak up for yourself. You don't have to dumb yourself down to make this other person feel feel better. Yeah. You know, but it's scary, though. The growth is is beautiful and it's scary at the same time, because it's like when you start to have that peace within yourself, you start to attract that. And it's scary because mm-hmm. you think, is this real? Like, right. What t- I had to tell my therapist, like, because I started dating and then I had finally found someone. Well, not even want to say I found someone, like, I guess met someone who's compatible. And it's like, I told her, I said, I feel like he's from outer space. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it she don't said, feel why? like that at first, girl. I said, I said, <laughs> this feels weird. I said, this don't feel right. It doesn't feel right. I feel like a bomb's about to drop. And she said, you need to, she said, you have a deeper trauma you need to figure out. Mm. Yeah. Yep. And it's like, you try, you, you know, you want to keep being positive, but when you are, it's scary because when positive things start to happen, they're not what you're used to. Yeah. Are you still with him? Yeah, we we're going on a third date soon. It's really, will, it's awesome. I'm so proud of you. I'm telling you, I came through that journey and I talk about that in my book. Uh, the man that I dated, um, he taught me how to trust men again. Mm. So, Fran, I think I'm learning how to trust myself. And that, that is the that's most important it, part. Right. And that's what it is. That's why, like, I guess I can piggyback off your question, Max. Like, peace for me is learning how to trust me because the decisions yep. I have made in my past have not done that, not done well for me at all. Like, yeah. and it's caused me to truly doubt the decisions I I make, especially when it comes to men. Yeah, yeah. So when I go through situationships and this, that, and the third, I'll just accept it. Cause I'm like, you know, it'll get better until I had to tell myself you're worth more than this. I, I need you to realize that. And so when I started to dive deep into self-love and self-reflection and start to get certain people, a lot of people, that mean well to me have been drawn to me and then when mm-hmm. it comes to like because max knows i had a dating thing this is not the first person i dated i had dated and then it was <laughs> no yeah, thank yeah, yeah. you yeah, yeah so it's like all of a sudden this person and i'm like um who are you mm-hmm. why are you where are you from mm-hmm. because it feels weird and i'm like trust yourself speak positive because yeah if it doesn't work it doesn't work and that's okay and i have to tell myself it's okay but be intentional so i've become more intentional i'm gonna ask you questions if i gotta go to google and get these questions to ask you i'm yep. gonna go to google use your resources but use your I'm resources to, to help you. right i'm gonna ask hey, you questions. Text, text the group <laughs> right like listen i need to know because and i'm like you gotta do this for you shanice because if you do this for you, then you start to learn to trust yourself. And if you trust mm-hmm. yourself, that will open up. I'm very intuitive. I'm very mm-hmm. empathic. I, I'll know things that happen. I know what not to get into. So if I get into it and something happens, I'm like, I should have known. I, I knew I was supposed to do that. Yeah. So I try oh, to step back and listen to that third eye of mine. Because if I don't, 
I'm going to get screwed. Yeah. And I think that's another thing to kind of piggyback off the situation that happened last week. This person has so much good starting to come into their life. And I think it's scaring the shit out of them. And I think what they're, they're doing is like what anybody else would do. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, they feel like this is not real to attack. Self-sabotage. Yeah, self-sabotage. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I need you to sit back. I need you to look at all the good that has come so far. Be grateful for it. Because you are about it. to destroy it. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and, and that, that comes down to really, all right, cut sling load on everything for a day. And that is hard for a lot of people to do. You Even a cut, cut, cut sling low? Cut sling. So what I mean by that is you fully immerse yourself mm-hmm. in yourself. Mm. Shut the distractions off. Clear your fucking calendar. You know what I mean? If you have kids, arrange for someone to watch them if possible. Babysit mm-hmm. a family member, whatever. Cut everything off and go either sit in silence for a bit to contemplate everything, go on a walk, whatever, journal, write, whatever it is that you need to do that is in tune with you is what you need to do. Because when you start investing that critical time for yourself, you're going to start to catch on to things. You're going to be like, shit, I'm always getting mad over this. Mm-hmm. Why? You start researching, you start digging in and then you're like, fuck, I get it that progress is going to start occurring. It's going to be small, but the more you do it, the compound effect is going to kick in. Mm -hmm. Really going to start to unravel. I got trauma. I need therapy. Yep. That light's going to turn on. I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. I need the therapy. Shit. I'm signing myself up for therapy ASAP. I I think it all goes back to that. Right now to my employment. Because I've held off on it thinking, well, you know, I'm on my own little journey. But you know what? I'm at a point in my life where I want access to more resources to find out more things to get myself even better than what I am right now. And therapy is the way to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, when that really the first step is that person has to be willing to right. the distraction software, dedicate absolute time to themselves. And when a person can't do that, guess what? They're going to stay in that hamster wheel. They're going to mm-hmm. stay in the matrix. They're going to keep taking right. the blue pill. And then they're going to get mad when shit continues <laughs> to crumble and they're going to blame everybody else and continue to burn bridges. That person is a nuclear bomb and they don't even realize it. Yeah. You know, dangerous, very dangerous. So, so. yeah dangerous yeah felton been quiet over there what's your two-piece felton <laughs> felton's tinkering with something right now i'm messing with you felton <laughs> no 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 i'll just remind like what was the question again you got so, so far into it i just forget what we were doing with the question yeah i know we'd now. be going deep into conversation yeah, yeah i'll be i'll be this like damn what was the question because they're gonna ask me like, <laughs> we were talking about peace yeah, we were talking about is is what's no, more valuable. Yeah, what's yeah. What's, yeah, what's more valuable? What's, like, what's more valuable? Peace, being right, or you know, getting that revenge. You know what I mean? Honestly, I think revenge is the least of the three. You know what I mean? I think peace, man. I think peace is priceless, man. I think peace is well. Peace. Yeah, peace, peace is well. Is well. Pe- peace is worth more than than anything to me, for me mm-hmm. at least. Mm-hmm. It's it has no monetary value. It's just something that is like an aura. It's like the mm. what's that fucking TV? What's that goddamn uh, the movie? The black guy, black karate guy, show show enough. What was that movie called? Oh, um, nope. you know, talking nope. about the Last Dragon. The Last Dragon. Oh, he's talking about. I think he's talking about kung fu movie, friend. Oh, you know, okay. Yeah. Oh, man. The Shaolin monk or what's Yeah, I'm about to say the Shaolin. Name? I want to say yeah. Shaolin. No, 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 no. It's an older. It's, like it's an old joint. 70s. 70s. We're talking 70s. Yeah. Is it a black Yo, karate movie? Yeah. It's like only a few. It's like only one. It's really. Shaft? 
Nah, Yo, that's not nah. a it's, it's I know, I know. <laughs> Freaking Leroy. Yeah, y'all remember it's, it's a character it's, named it's, Leroy. It's going, I do. it's going hit us. It's going hit oh, us. Oh, I know what he's talking about. I cannot remember the name of it though. <laughs> it's, it's going. It's got going the, hit they us. got the song. Yeah, it's going to hit us. Yo, that he got this aura and shit. Like, mm-hmm. yo, we'll, we'll we'll talk about it later. But yeah, for me, peace is everything. Peace is yeah. that's it for me. Peace, one. peace for me is a non-negotiable. Yep. Yeah. Priceless. Because revenge, I think revenge is like m- revenge is like maturity level, man. Yeah, it's child's really, play. Kind of shit. Yeah, it's child's play, and like revenge, is, it has to be something that was like the only thing I'm revenging is someone's death. That's probably about it. Is I it mean, the last dragon? dragon? Yes, I think the last dragon. Yeah, last dragon, he got yeah. the song. Yeah, he got the glow. <laughs> yeah, like I appreciate her. Mm-hmm. But man, this was this was a this was a heavy conversation, man. And um, I want to hit y'all with a couple of quotes before we wrap this up. Um, oh, so yep, get that yeah, get that pen ready. You know what I mean? I'll throw them in the chat also. Um, this one I don't know who said it, but I was reading an article and I saw it and I was like, ooh, that's good. But it says, emotions are not like a powerful force of nature, but like a candidate slash king who promises gifts. Mm. We willingly hand the keys to our kingdom to get those gifts. Mm. Basically, that's when we let our emotions allow us to go haywire. Yep. When we give them control. Yep, mm-hmm. we give our emotions power and we're just like, do yep. with it what you will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. Very true. But um, there's that one. Then there's this one's from Jonathan Swift. There's none so blind as they that won't see. Mm. That was for you, Shanice. <laughs> for yeah. your friend. There's none so <laughs> for your there's friend. <laughs> none so blind as they that won't see. That. So like people who just purposely just like choose not to. Yep. Mm-hmm. Got mm-hmm. you. Yep. The chick that uh is in her sorrows and keeps telling the same story. Right. Insanity. I just don't understand it. That insanity. Yeah. This next one is from Confucius. Mm. I like him. I know that name. And I quote, a great man is hard on himself. A small man is hard on others. Mm, God. <laughs> Say that again. At that, looking at that straw it's in someone this. else's eye instead of the rafter in your own. Uh-huh. A great man is hard on himself. A small man is hard on others. Mm. hmm All right, next we got, we got, I got two more. Okay. This next one is from Marcus Aurelius. Mm, I love him. One of my favorites from Stoicism. And I quote, an infected mind is far more dangerous pestilence than any plague. One only threatens your life. The other destroys your character. Mm. Say that again. An infected mind is far more dangerous pestilence mm. than any plague. One only threatens your life, the other destroys your character. Mm. That reminds me of when the people, it's like it's easy to get an it's easy to get a name mm. and hard to get it taken away. Yes. So like those that were used to grow up and people will call them certain names. When you see them to this day, that's the only thing people can remember them as. Oh, they used to be this. Yeah. Yeah. They used to yep. be that. And it's like, dude, they're not that anymore. Right. Mm. Right. You know, that, that, that's. Mm. Ooh, they hold boy. on to the image of what was mm-hmm. without yep. acknowledging the present. You know why? Because holding on to the image of what was makes them feel comfortable because they're still there. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. This last one is from Kato. Kato, Kato, C-A-T-O. Kato. Me if I miss, yeah, Kato. 
forgive me for mispronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> but he says, I begin to speak when I am certain what I'll say isn't better left unsaid. Dang. I begin to speak when I am certain what I'll say isn't better left unsaid. Because mm. man, when you get in them emotions and you quick to pop off, mm -hmm. be no careful. Bueno. Tongue is very powerful. That's it. Can't take That's words it. back. Nope. Mm -mm. That was powerful. Thank I feel you for like that. Yeah, I feel like emotions are like a drunk person. You know, they say drunk men tell no lies. Hmm. I feel like when you're emotional, like especially extremely emotional, you say exactly what it is you've been feeling all along. All the time. You just finally have the opportunity to say it. Mm -hmm. And that's dangerous because oh. you can't take those words back. I'll like my cousin had a fight. Yeah, my cousin had a fight with an old friend of ours. A bad fight. They had an argument of something. He got killed a couple days later. He couldn't even say, she couldn't say bye to him. He was 17. This is years ago. She couldn't say bye to him or, no, or anything. That crushed her. So that, that, taught, that taught her a lesson. You got to be mindful of your words. Yeah, you do. You really do. You really I think do. Also, too, like I noticed something that happened to me this week. Um, like two people that I'm dealing with in my life, they're going through some stuff. Mm -hmm. And they said some things to me that I didn't too much agree with. Mm -hmm. And because of therapy and Shanice, I could hear you doing the work. So I commend yeah. you, my sister. Um, mm -hmm. I could hear what they're saying to me through their hurt. Mm -hmm. so some of those things I can't keep them accountable for right because of the spaces that they're operating in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's also something to be mindful of too yeah yeah I've heard a quote and uh, <coughs> this is this is one that comes to mind when, since we're talking about words words are great servants but terrible masters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the power of wordplay. <laughs> Words are great servants, but terrible masters. Oh, we do not need our words leading. Mm -hmm. awesome. I think we're, I, I agree and disagree with that because I think, you know, how we were talking about that experiment with water with Dr. Emoto. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, our yeah. words are power. Mm -hmm. Regardless of whether we say them, uh, just, lackadaisically mm -hmm. yes or intentional mm -hmm. uh Very the intent with what they're what with what they are released with will come into fruition or manifest in some particular way yes mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, yeah if i guess if you look at it that way that's correct yeah and that's that's the lovely thing about mm -hmm. that quote in itself is there's there's multiple ways that you can interpret that. Mm -hmm. And that further pr proves a point as well. You know what I mean? We're all different. We're all bred different. We all have quirks and vulnerabilities. Okay. You know what I mean? But you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, we're all connected. We're all people. Yeah. You know, very much so. So, yeah. but ladies right. and gentlemen, this was Grown Folk Talk. We appreciate you. We hope you enjoyed the message. Like, comment, subscribe if you're feeling the vibe. This will be hung on YouTube here shortly probably not today because i'm tired as fuck i'm not gonna lie to you but by wednesday this bad boy will be hung so like comment subscribe if you're feeling the vibe we'll be back next friday with another banger i'm bronx ronin the sensei we're out of here peace